Well, welcome. We're gonna get started here in just a minute, but before we do, maybe I'll just uh, tell you about our card system that we have back there for those who want to speak tonight. So the card system is broken up so we can get, allow everybody to speak. It doesn't look like we have a oh, real room full, so we should be okay. But um, if you pick out a card, the green cards are, if you want to speak, we'll give you a minute with the green card. The yellow cards, we give you two minutes and the orange cards will give you up to three minutes. Um, so it just would help us kind of plan the time for the evening, but it doesn't look like we have a uh, huge audience here, so it may not be too, too much of a problem. So if you just fill out uh, one of those cards or grab one of those speaker cards, then uh, we'll call them up in order. So we'll call up the uh, first the green cards and then the yellow cards and then the uh, orange cards. All right, very good. Well, it is time to start the meeting now, so we'll call this uh, November 7th Planning Commission meeting to order, and if I could get a roll call, please. Commissioner Ruth? Here. Commissioner Newman? Here. Commissioner Christensen? Here. Commissioner Wilk? Here. And Chair Welch? Here, thanks. Thank you. And now we'll do the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Mm. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic, Great, well thank you for uh, attending here. This meeting is Cablecast Live on Charter Communications, Cable TV Channel 8 and AT&T U-verse Channel 99. And it's also being recorded to be replayed on the following Monday and Friday at 1 p.m. on Charter Channel 71 and Comcast Channel 25. The meetings can also be viewed from the city's website, cityofcapitola.org. Our technician tonight is Kingston Rivera. Uh, Rivera. And uh, just as a reminder, if you have phones, if you could put them on vibrate motor science, that would be appreciated. And uh, with that, we'll start moving forward with the meeting. Um, first, we're gonna start with our oral communications. Any additions or deletions? Yes, so there were 16 additional material emails. They're at your dais right. there, and they're in the back for the public to view. Very good, and that bicycle community, do we have anybody here? They have a pretty good network of getting the word out, so I think all 16 came from the bicycle community, but thanks for that. <coughs> um, public comment, so this is our public comment period. This is for someone that would like to speak about an item that is not on tonight's agenda, and so that would be anything outside of the Capitola Mall. Uh, we'll give you an opportunity to come up and speak uh, to the Planning Commission to address us. Okay, seeing none, we'll just keep moving forward. It's time for commission comments. Nothing. Nothing. Uh, staff comments. Um, actually, I'd like to take a minute just to introduce our team. Um, this evening, we have Eric Phillips with us from our city attorney's office. And um, you've heard over the past couple of meetings, I keep introducing that we've hired new consultants to work on behalf of the city uh, related to the mall project. Um, to my to my right, I have Matt Audison. Uh, he's a planner with RRM Design. And to his right is Scott Martin, um, an architect with RRM Design. And John Schwarz, our planner extension of working as, a, he um, owns JHS Consulting and is working as an extension of staff for the mall project. Great, well welcome, we appreciate the help. Okay, so we'll move on to item three, approval of our minutes, and we have two sets of minutes. Uh, one set from October 3rd, and I don't know if we need to do it separately because we, uh, if somebody missed a meeting, but, um, so if I can get, ask for approval of our October 3rd Planning Commission meetings. So moved. Second. Uh, motion is second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That passes. And now for uh, 3B for our special meeting on October 17th. I have a motion. Second. And a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And so that also passes unanimously. So now we're going to move forward to our public <coughs> hearing section of the meeting, which is on the Capitola Mall. And I just want to give you a little bit uh, of an idea how the, the night will go uh, as far as how we're going to roll this out. So first we're going to have John, uh, as Katie just introduced, Schwartz, of, uh, and he represents our city uh, with JHS Consulting. So he's gonna give a basic overview of uh, the project. After that, we'll have Morlone Geyer, 
who is the applicant for the mall, give us an overview and history of the uh, project design. Uh, and then we're gonna have stakeholder agencies and technical review feedback with uh, John Schwartz. Uh, then we will move on to RRM Design who um, have been in part of this process working with Malone Geyer, representing the city on kind of making sure we're staying on track architecturally. And then after that, Malone and Geyer will have a chance to follow up with anything uh, that they think they missed after hearing RRM uh, discuss it. We'll bring it back to the Planning Commission for questions that we may have, and then after that, it will be time for the public hearing for you to speak. Um, and after we hear from all those who wish to speak tonight, then we'll uh, bring it back to the uh, Planning Commission for final comments and direction. So that's the general plan. So with that, I guess I will turn it over to John. Great, thank you, Mr. Chair, and members of the commission. Can you hear me okay? Um, again, this item tonight is a conceptual review for redevelopment of a substantial portion of the Capitola Mall property. Conceptual review provides an applicant an opportunity to obtain early feedback on a design prior to submitting a formal application. In this case, Merlone Geyer is seeking guidance and feedback on preliminary design for about 31.4 acres of the 46 acre Capitola Mall site. Uh, Mr. Chair ran through the, sort of the outline for the item tonight. I'm gonna skip over that. I'm just gonna touch on briefly the site itself. I think everyone is familiar with the mall site itself, but it's 46 acres in total. It's in the regional commercial zone designation. The site is located west of 41st Avenue between Clare Street and Capitola Road. Currently, there's about 640,000 <coughs> square feet of retail uses on about 10 parcels on the mall property which is surrounded by a mix of commercial development with some residential to the west and southwest. In 1975, the area was annexed into the city. The mall opened originally in 1977. It was expanded in the late 1980s to include four department stores and about 100 shops and restaurants. Uh, the existing mall building has a height of roughly 35 feet and a current tenant base of about 68 or so tenants. The existing Target, Macy's, and Kohl's buildings are larger anchor retail type stores that would remain on the site. It's a little small, I apologize. Uh, over the last decade, the city has been focused on the long-term viability of the mall property and set out to create specific policies, goals, and actions to ensure or to incentivize and guide redevelopment at the property. The zoning code, which was adopted in 2018, implements that recent guidance to incentivize redevelopment. The site again is designated for regional commercial use. This is really intended for retail and services for Capitola residents, uh, visitors to the area. The designation allows a maximum floor area ratio of 1.5 with an allowance to go up to 2.0 if certain conditions are met. I'm gonna just give a very quick overview. I'm not gonna get into the details. Marlon Geyer will, get, uh, will go over the project in a few minutes, but just at a basic sense, the project again is proposing redevelopment of 31.4 acres of the 46 acre mall property. The concept includes a new open air design with a main street commercial district, approximately 339,000 square feet of retail space, including a theater, a mix of entertainment and fitness and retail uses. The project also proposes up to 637 residential units. In fact, I should go here, sorry, let me back up. The commercial space is shown here in the blue boxes. And the 637 residential units would be built al along 38th Avenue within a seven story building and a five story building. The main components of the project include demolishing uh, the former Sears building, a portion of the existing mall, and the former Takara restaurant pad. The project also includes various transportation improvements. The idea is to build out a grid street pattern here shown with the arrows through the property. There would also be pedestrian and bicycle improvements as well as other infrastructure, sewer and water and such. This chart just shows a little basic uh, comparison of the, uh, some of the development standards that apply to the property. 
the maximum column shows the uh, under the existing designation the maximum FAR open space and height limits the proposed project is seeking a planned development zoning to m basically to allow for uh, clustering of the residential in one portion of the site and raising the height to 85 feet in that portion of the property so again the applicant is seeking what we call a planned development zoning the purpose of a PD zoning is to allow for a high quality development that deviates from the standards in the city uh, and zoning district regulations. It's intended to provide flexibility uh, for an applicant to take advantage of unique site characteristics and to hopefully develop projects which, which can provide extreme public benefits for the residents, employees, and visitors of Capitola. A PD zoning is required, it must illustrate how the development would be superior to what is allowed under the existing designations and how we will achieve the substantial public benefits. Uh, examples of such public benefits, I won't read this list, but they include things like affordable housing, public spaces, green building and sustainable development, preservation historic resources, jobs, transportation options, particularly pedestrian and multimodal transportation facilities and improvements, public park space or habitat restoration. So in terms of process, uh, again, this is uh, a conceptual review process tonight. We are hoping to obtain guidance and feedback on the initial application from the Planning Commission tonight. The City Council meeting next Thursday, we will obtain feedback as well. After that, the applicant will take the direction and guidance that they hear and hopefully refine the project and finalize their application. We currently expect the formal application to be submitted after the new year, probably sometime in January. Once that formal application is submitted, the city will conduct its usual thorough review and processing of that application. That will involve detailed staff review, coordination with stakeholder agencies and interested parties, a, a second more detailed design review by our consultant RRM, who you'll hear from in a few minutes, and then also the environmental review process, which is required under the California Environmental Quality Act, will be required at that point. We, the city has contracted with uh, DUDEC to prepare an environmental impact report for this project. Given the size of the development and the interest and issues associated with it, we expect a full EIR to be needed. Uh, DUDEC is, is uh, beginning work on that EIR now, but the bulk of the work will really take shape once the project application is finalized after the turn of the year. Once we go through all of those review processes, the project will come back to public hearings for consideration. We expect currently that that anticipated, uh, the completion of that process will be around this time next year. I'm going to just touch on, again, staff and, and the applicant are requesting guidance on the following main questions or issues. The architectural design, the massing, articulation of the proposed development, the layout and circulation both within the site and the connectivity to the surrounding properties and adjacent areas, the mix of the proposed uses, what are the desired public benefits, and affordable housing. So with that, I'm going to turn over to Mamon Geyer to go through the project, and then we'll come back and talk a little bit about the technical reviews. Thank you, John. Chair, commissioners, my name is Stephen Logan with Mamon Geyer Partners, and so I'd like to introduce a couple of my uh, teammates that are here with me today, of Dave Geyser, Andy Neff, and Baron Karenite, who are on our project team, supporting us through this um, development moving forward. And so. What I wanted to do is touch base really quickly on, I know we've gone through a couple of these slides in the past that talks about ownership and the reason why it's, it's really key to hear is that we only own 31 of the 46 acres that are on site. Um, but when we bought the mall, we bought the light blue part of the mall which included Kohl's and the interior portion of the mall. Sears was separately owned, Target was separately owned, Macy's was separately owned the Olive Garden piece and the two banks and the Ross parcel as well. So this just goes to show that we were very limited in our, in our ability to put together what was part of the general plan and part of the visioning for, for the mall moving forward. And so 
you know, we purchased the mall from Maestrich in April of 2016. At that point in time, we own about 45% of the entire property. And like I said, Sears, Target, and Macy's all have site plan control over um, an REA uh, governing uh, document as well. So they, they, they do have approval rights moving forward, and, and we'll touch base on that really quickly in a second. Um, so back at the end of last year, Sears approached us, as they have with a lot of their boxes, and had decided that they were going to um, go dark, especially at this location. So it gave us the, the, the ability to, to get them out of, at, out of the mall and gives us the ability to um, own a bigger portion of the site. We now own 67% of the site. And as I mentioned earlier, Target and Macy's do have approval rights over, over this process. And so we have been talking to them about getting their buy-in to the current plan that we will show you here in, uh, in a couple of minutes. Um, so next, John talked uh, quickly about schedule. We had an initial community outreach meeting in January of 2018. The feedback we got from that it was very underwhelming because we basically showed a remodel of the existing mall. Um, and so we went back, we took a lot of those comments back to our team to really think about it. And then <coughs> once the Sears piece um, came to us, we decided that it was now time to put together a plan to share with the community. Um, the second community outreach meeting happened in June of this year, and roughly 150 people or so att attended that meeting. So it was a great conversation to hear back from the community about what they really wanted to, to see as part of the plan, and, we'll, and Dave will walk you through some of those ideas moving forward. Uh, the month of November is a conceptual review um, hearings. We will then submit a formal application in January. The environmental pr review process will roughly go between January to next fall. We hope to get project approval through the Planning Commission and City Council by next fall. Uh, we will then start construction documents um, spring of, of 21 and, cons and start construction in spring of summer of 21. It'll take roughly about three years to build the project. There are a lot of details that need to go into that project on a, on a construction aspect, but that's roughly, we think it's three years. Part of it could be phased, depending on how much housing wanted to be built at one time. Um, but high level, that's where we're at with the schedule today. Gosh, this thing is. So one of the things we wanted to talk about, and, 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 and we'll walk through this, is that we really took your visioning document and the general plan and really used that document to plan our development. And Key uses of that were public gathering places, amenities, um, renovation of the mall, pushing buildings to the street, and adding some housing. And so we really took that plan, and when we walk you through the design of the plan moving forward, I think you'll really resonate with, with some of those ideas moving forward. So um, with that, good evening, Dave. Good evening, I'm Dave Geyser. I'm the in-house architect for Malone Geyser. I, I direct our design and construction uh, portfolio-wide and have been involved in this project since its inception. Uh, and again, you heard uh, Stephen talk about uh, studying your, your visioning documents and what the effort, planning efforts that have gone into this project previously and, and using that to uh, educate ourselves into how best we might be able to re-envision them all. As he mentioned, our very first planning session, we only own the mall, so our, our efforts were redesigning interior of the mall itself and part of the exterior. And, and again, I think that fell flat because people were wanting to see more happen. So it was really fantastic when they had the opportunity to buy from Saratoz the Sears piece. Really, we just went back to the drawing board in terms of how could we uh, re-envision uh, the mall. And so uh, we gave a presentation in June to the community. We had a great attendance there. And our, our general plan of how this uh, site is organized hasn't changed from then, but we've had an opportunity since June to actually uh, generate a lot more details and refinements of that design, which I'll walk you through here this evening. Um, but people are going to recognize some of these plans from last June, and, and the site because the site organization hasn't changed since then. You'll see on the on the board we see uh, the area that we're proposing to demolish of the mall. We're leaving part of the existing mall that's next to Coles. There's some uh, lease control there with some of the tenants that are there. Um, and so we're, uh, at this point in our beginning phase, need to leave them in place and leave them open during construction. So we thought we'd take advantage of, of leaving part of the mall in place, but again, tearing down the Sears, tearing down the main port of the mall, leaving uh, Macy's and uh, Target and Kohl's all open during construction. So this was the conceptual rendering that we provided uh, in June, uh, which shows kind of the organization organization of the site. Once we tear down the mall, we have an opportunity to relocate the main drive off 41st Street 
through the center of the project and create a main street that actually runs through that through the through the heart of the project but at the same time create uh, other street grids that allow uh, tr not only access in and through the project but help alleviate some of the traffic around the site by giving people ways to circulate through the site which aren't there today you simply have to drive around the mall so we'll come back to this a little later but this gives the basic overview of how we're organizing the site Holes and parts of the mall are staying the same. We're bringing buildings to 41st Street and we're introducing housing over retail uh, on the south part of the site while still creating this uh, very exciting uh, uh, open space uh, that didn't exist before. So you saw previously the slide and we'll try to get here uh, through this pretty quick. Again, you see the, the relocated signal on 41st Street. By the way, we're still working through, we have some proposals from our civil engineer and how we need to uh, reorient and reconfigure some of the medians along 41st Street there and how those intersect with uh, businesses across the street. This conceptual, we still have some uh, problems to solve there, challenges to solve uh, and how that's gonna work. But we, because it's a T intersection today, we think it'll still continue to work as a T intersection uh, going forward um, to create that main spine through the middle of the project. At the same time, we are also going to reinforce what we're calling 40th uh, uh, Street there, 40th Avenue through the front of the project and then creating a, a continuation of 38th Avenue through the middle of the project north-south that'll pick up at the signal, the existing signal on the south end of the site and continue through to Claire's. There's another street that it's hard to see on here but I think it was evident on John's slide where we actually had uh, where another driveway off of 41st Street which is here and actually that's going to drag through the majors under the parking structures and to Target's front door uh, again east west through the site it's not necessarily a street per se because of the pedestrian orientation but it's an access way an easement uh, not easement but access way through the site to provide ways for a, vi a vehicle circulation and so the way the sites and organized um, again is that we have over t you, we have new 41st street uh, 41st Avenue uh, retail facing the main street through the new parking lot there and then our first phase of residential sits on top of that five stories of residential on top of the ground floor retail next to that in pink pink represents where there's housing not over top of the retail but over that section we have a theater that sits on the second floor a 10 to 12 screen theater that enters from the heart of the project where the where the, the town square is at the middle that's the entrance to the second floor theater that sits over ground floor retail on the other side of the main street, we have a uh, room for renovating the existing mall and putting new majors, new tenants, again, building on the main street experience. And then once we get into the project, we see in yellow again, residential B, which sits on grades. This is not over retail where the yellow is, but it sits over top of the shops that are facing the main street. And I'll show you some signs to see how that works. And then all that builds around the big central plaza here we're now Macy's and Target, instead of entering into the mall, enter into this great public square. And so all that's highly monetized. We'll show you some pictures of that. Uh, public gathering spaces and fountains and artwork and seating and gathering. All that happens now at the heart of the project. Again, all this, there's zero open space today at the mall, as you well know. There's no place to go outside. And so the idea is how do we celebrate these areas and create these plazas and public areas that didn't exist before that act as a, as a true uh, magnet to gather people there. And then uh, exiting through the project. So we'll just keep clicking along here. This is the second floor that I talked about. We see the theater on the second level in pink, yellow is representative housing, and then we see Target's, Target and Macy's and their second floors that exist there, and the existing parking structure for Target that we're not touching either. Signage is gonna be a big key of the project. There's very little signage today, and the, the tenants that are gonna wanna come inside the project without exterior facing frontage and, and visibility are gonna want signage uh, facing the street so the people know that they're there. So we're proposing additional signage on 41st Street and around the project and throughout the project. Uh, this is one of the things that does not comply with your current uh, code. So this is, a, this is one of those above and beyond things that we're looking for. And so we're in the process of one, changing the name for the identity of the project. We heard through our community outreach that we wanted to keep the name of Capitol in the name. We've done that. And we thought because of the great center, a square, the plaza area in the center, a town square name seemed appropriate for this. It's a working title today. If you have suggestions or have strong, please let us know. This is not set in stone, but it's our working title for the project at this point. 
but again, keeping the name Capitola in, a, in the product names it is something we're, we're, we're definitely looking to do. And then uh, preliminary design for uh, product identification, not only on 41st, but on Capitola. And then we're uh, planning on renovating the signs that exist through the Target and Macy's and Ross parking lots that we don't own. They're not on a property, but we're going to renovate those as a part of the, the project. That's in the upper right hand. And we'll build, uh, we're proposing to build new smaller signs, 12 foot <coughs> tall signs at other entrances throughout the project. Again, identify not only existing tenants that are there, um, but our new major tenants that we're proposing, such as the theater and some of the other majors who are going to want that kind of signage. All right, into some of the visuals. So this is the information we didn't have before and that we've been working on since June. And what we see here now, and, and if you try to remember the project, this is looking at the corner of the majors that are facing 41st. And we see the five stories of residential sitting on top of the anchor tenant that we'll have on Capitola Road on our left and the 40th Avenue in front of the project. And we see a series of majors with tenants above. We're trying to provide uh, a design style that's contemporary, but also fits in kind of a mode that is uh, colorful. It's, it's got a lot of rich materials in there. If you look in your packages, you'll see elevation sheets and rendering sheets that have listed on there the different materials that we're proposing on each of these elevations. We want to enlarge these elevations for this presentation, so we've taken them out of here, but they're in your package. So, so each rendering, each elevation has, has material, proposed materials, and the idea is, is instead of just plain stucco buildings here, we've got rich materials and metals and woods, and we're still using some plasters, but using uh, materials such as your walk at the ground level that creates more visual interest, uh, it, it's just, it just creates a warmer building. So this is then, I'm looking down the main street that we're creating here on the right hand side. This is another uh, anchor tenant facing 41st. Uh, we have to provide, because there's existing, I don't know if you remember, there's Target and Macy's signage up above now facing 41st. They have the rights to those signs. So we're proposing that we keep their identifications in those locations, but trying to integrate those into the architecture. And then on the, the box, it is the theater, because the theater box on the outside is really just blank wall. Um, we're proposing a, 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 a graphic there that not only tries to create a, a more of a, a vibe that we're trying to create for the center, but also some visual interest. And again, this is a placeholder. This is, is not, it remains to be uh, designed, but we, the idea is that, hey, we're trying to create some graphics up there on these wall spaces. This is the theater entrance itself. So at the intersection of 38th and the Town Square Way, the, the Main Street Center, this is where the entrance to the theater is. The idea is to drag all the people that are going to the theater through the main square, through the public space, energize uh, that town square area. So if you're walking in through the corner up to the theater up above, again, use a strong graphics and visual cues like cinema marquees uh, at that entrance, using contemporary design for this. Uh, here we have then on 38th Avenue, as I'm coming in from Capitola, again, I have my residential over at this point, we're trying to activate the ground floor with leasing offices um, and they'll end up having some kind of, probably some kind of gym and other hangout areas and common area space. We'll activate the ground floor with those type of uh, uses uh, down that residential street towards Capitola. In fact, and this is a good time for uh, Stephen to jump in just to talk quickly about the type of housing we're looking at. So we've, um, we did a concrete report to go look at what type of housing is needed in Capitola in Santa Cruz County. And it came back that, you know, multifamily studio one and two bedroom was really needed, you know, with the occupancy around um, <coughs> Santa Cruz County. It'll be market driven. We're going to obviously affordable housing is going to be a big component to this. And, and we'll and we're going to do per, per city standards and, and discuss that with staff. There, there's two other potential types of housing here. It's independent living and senior living. You can imagine putting 630 units out on the street at one time that the get, getting them to be occupied at the same time might be difficult. So when we were talking to housing groups, we're looking at other types of housing as well, so not just multifamily. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Another uh, view of the housing. This is, uh, again, this is at-grade housing on Capitola and 38th Street coming into the project. Again, trying to create a unique identity for the project that used a lot of different materials and colors. Uh, again, just to, to create a village type of feel, a little bit different than uh, the retail, but trying to tie into the contemporary nature of the design. So now we're on Main Street looking back towards the, uh, the east, 
um, down Main Street. This is a corner that's opposite the theater entrance. So here we have a row of shops that's under uh, the housing uh, on this corner. Um, again, using the housing over Main Street to help create a village type feel. And at the same time, trying to create individual tenant spaces. In your village, you have you know each individual shop and each, uh, they each have their own identity. The idea is how to create that type of uh, vibe or feel for a village, not a village, we're not trying to redesign the village here, but a, a real sense of, of a town square by creating individual identities for the different tenants. And, and so th that's what you see here and, and you'll see in some of the other slides that the, the individual tenants, it's not like a ball where everything's the same and they only have control over a small section. We're redesigning the entire building for individual tenants. So this, as you would be standing in the food court, I guess, of the existing mall and looking back towards the target entrance, this is now how we're opening that up and flanking the target entrance with other retail restaurant uses and uh, enhancing the outdoor space with gathering spaces and outdoor dining. And then conversely, if I turn around and look back the other way towards the Macy's entrance, again, standing you know, there in the center spot of the old mall today, looking back and how the Macy's entrance is then flanked by shops and really the heart of the center with outdoor uh, play space and gathering and artwork and benches and uh, maybe some graphic screens. We're really trying to create a different uh, identity for the shop, individual shop spaces, but create a really wonderful outdoor space for the community to gather. Keep in mind too that this isn't, while this is also for the community to come to and shop and hang out, we're also gonna have a lot of residents that are gonna live here too. This is their home, this is their backyard. And, and in projects we've done similarly, this becomes a neighborhood focus as well, and a place where they hang out and go for walks and meet their friends and take their dogs out for a walk or go in jogging. So this becomes a really vibrant community core here and a new meeting place in the city that didn't exist before. So the Coles is gonna stay, and so we're uh, trying to look at ideas on how we refurb the outside of their building to make it look interesting. We actually came up with the idea of we have artwork that we want to integrate into the design, perhaps, and this is just a concept now, is that perhaps we can integrate artwork into the side of their building, where it's just a blank wall now, that maybe has the old uh, Begonia Festival posters that can be huge frame graphics that we light up and, and create visual interest along the side of the building. Um, and so that's what we're proposing here, and whether that idea changes, we'll, but artwork will be an integral part of our project. So into the landscape, our overall landscape plan, I think it was important to note that our open space right now, our proposed open space is well over 20%, which is, uh, your requirement's five. Um, so we've really gone the extra mile to create these outdoor spaces, pedestrian paseos, um, and places to gather, um, and just soft spots uh, in the architecture where, where um, a lot of open space can occur. Um, again, coming off the new uh, 41st uh, Avenue entrance, we've brought some pad buildings per the vision documents. We bring pad buildings to the street with outdoor areas to dine. Um, and we see these as being um, food users, some smaller shop space, but really uh, to, to set where the entrance is and to anchor the Main Street as it hits 41st. The first part of Main Street is where you're walking past uh, the Chili's on the right corner and our anchor tenant on the left. You're walking down Main Street towards the theater, towards the square, and we're introducing diagonal parking on this. We feel that having a limited amount of parking on that Main Street really gives it a, a, a downtown feel, if you will, but where there's cars interacting, single lane each way, it slows the traffic down, a lot of traffic calming that's happening here, but really generous sidewalk and landscaping street trees and, and festoon lighting, per perhaps over the top of those streets that, that create a sense of place, but that also, you know, you, you know that you're, you know, proceeding down shops on either side, but towards a special area, which is here. So this is, this is our town square. This is where all the action happens. Wide streets, plazas, benches, artwork, fountains, uh, more festoon lighting, um, really creating a place for the community and the neighborhood to gather. We, uh, what we anticipate here, or what we're planning on doing is at the, at not only at the, at the bottom intersection, but the top is having raisable ballers that we can block the street off to vehicular traffic. So the idea is that on a Friday night or a Saturday, there's an event going on or, there, or the, the traffic, the pedestrian traffic is so heavy, we can close the street off to, uh, to cars and have people use the streets as maybe, a, maybe there's a start of a 5K or maybe there's a, a, a farmer's market or an art show or a car show or whatever that we can then use this whole area for, again, to create more area uh, for outdoor and public gathering. And because we've created all the additional circulation throughout the site, it doesn't impede any of the traffic uh, going around. Um, 
this is probably a good time because I've forgotten to mention before. Part of our plan, uh, essential part of our plan, is relocating the existing transit station. Where it sits right now, it really blocks access to the mall. Um, it's difficult in terms of cross traffic between the buses, the pedestrians, and so we've uh, we've brought back the previous <coughs> concept that they had to relocate the uh, the bus, the transit center back between the the Macy's and the Coles on the back end, which was a back corner. Well, now it's a front door to the project. <coughs> now, now it's really on that 38th Avenue spine. We've met with them a couple times already. They're excited about. Uh, that location they think because it's central to the mall and it's uh, out of away from the, the traffic um, they're excited about the concept so we're working with them right now on schedule they think they can get something approved early you know, maybe even next spring um, and that they want to be relocated earlier than later because they don't want to be a part of all the construction activity that's happening and because the access is in and out of claire's street it they can they can operate independently there while the construction is going on they're very excited about relocating and I, we just think it's gonna be a great, not only can we upgrade that a transit center to include multimodal, we have bike racks and bike storage and those type of a things are running, uh, starting to run electric buses, there's charging stations. So we're all very excited about moving them, putting them in the right place for the project. And, and obviously that's part of our, what we consider part of our community benefit. Speaking of community benefits, ah, I ended on the right note. Thanks Dave. So what we, what we believe is some of the community benefits um, today is that economic value by adding new relevant retail and restaurants not if in case you know 60 percent of the tenants that are in the mall today are temporary tenants and so we would like to bring new relevant retail and restaurants quality improvements to the community outdoor amenities sidewalk cafes improved outdoor walking and bike paths we did see that a lot of the comments today were about biking and i think you know as we start developing this um, further along that we're going to have to incorporate more of that into our project uh, community gathering places, additional housing for the community. Dave mentioned, you know, relocating the, the transit center and a transportation system enhancing mobility through the site. So um, with that, I will turn it back over to staff. Sure. Sorry, and I should have mentioned this before I turn it over. This is just a <coughs> scratch of the service of the information that's provided in your package. We're trying to limit our presentation. There's a lot of information in there, and, and I think you'll hear RRM comment on some of that that we haven't had a chance to take a deep dive into. This is highly conceptual, and we're, we're anxious to dig in more and, and develop the details regarding circulation and bike paths and all those kind of things. Those are details yet to come, um, but yeah, there's, again, a lot of information in your package. We And the one thing we missed, but we should talk about, is we're treating uh, water quality. We're not only treating now every drop that leaves the site that wasn't done before, um, and we're doing uh, the the uh, the amount of uh, water storage that needs to happen on site as well underground. Um, and so, and we're a lot of our design is yet to come because we haven't seen a lot of the studies. We're still studying traffic. We're still studying arborist reports. We're still studying all of those things that all come together. They layer into the project. So we'll be developing at a later time, and you'll see it a future application. <coughs> so with that, thank you. Thanks, David. Thank you, David, and Stephen. Um, and thank you for mentioning the metro relocation because I completely neglected to mention it myself, <laughs> so I apologize for that. Uh, also wanted to add that the future application is, a, I don't think I said this either, that the anticipated application is going to most likely include in addition to the plan development zoning, a vesting tentative map, potentially a development agreement, a design permit, and a master sign program. So thank you for touching on the signage as well. Okay. Um, Briefly, we're going to uh, just spend a few minutes talking about some of the stakeholder feedback that we've obtained so far and some of the technical internal reviews that have happened based on the initial application. Staff shared the application with uh, some of the stakeholder agencies who uh, serve the site or are uh, interested parties in the area. Uh, some of the feedback is here. This slide's a little dense. I uh, apologize for that. But uh, the staff is coordinating with Santa Cruz Water regarding the project. Given the size and nature of the project, uh, a full water supply assessment will be required as part of the project review and the environmental review. So we are working with Santa Cruz Water now to scope that work and, and iron out the processing of that document. Will become part of the EIR. Uh, County Sanitation District has weighed in. There are likely going to be some increases to downstream sewer mains. Um, uh, this would flow to the East Cliff pump station. It's currently anticipated that it could handle the increase in flows, but uh, much more detailed analysis will occur during the formal application review and the EIR process. Staff has reached out to uh, the fire district and Soquel Union Elementary 
Uh, we're coordinating with those folks and some feedback from those agencies is currently pending. Um, again, they will take a deeper dive during the full application review. But in all of our conversations thus far, we haven't heard any showstoppers from any of these folks. Again, pending further, much further analysis. Internal staff uh, has reviewed the initial application as well. Uh, some of the comments, and I don't want to spend too much time on these because RRM is going to get into some specific feedback, but just to hit a few highlights for you all. Uh, some of the main staff review comments about the initial project, thoughts to consider at this point in time, possibly rotating the building pads that are along at the 41st entry there to create more of a connected pedestrian experience along Town Square Way all the way through is an idea. Um, there's some concern with the repetitive and massing of the building on buildings on 38th and whether they fit with the style of Capitola and the development that exists. Um, the taller buildings there also could have some shade implications for the road open space areas and the shorter buildings to the north of Town Square Way. That will require some further study, particularly the shading in, in the environmental analysis. Uh, comments regarding the alignment of Town Square Way, and David spoke a little bit to this about the connections with the uh, Brown Ranch and Whole Foods and uh, uses across 41st. <coughs> Request to add more landscape improvements, elements along the frontages, particularly 41st and Capitola, uh, making them more pedestrian friendly, green, more improvements to, to enhance the frontages of the site. Uh, the development should include active public park space on the property. We want to ensure that the public realm spaces are sized to accommodate the activity that's intended. And one example of this, we've discussed this with, with Merlon Geyer as well, is the dog park area seems fairly small for the use that's intended. That's the kind of feedback we're talking about here, making sure that the uses we want are, are going to fly. Uh, we want to clarify that there are enhancements for all the different age groups that would be served on the site. There may be residents with uh, young families, seniors, young professionals, a mix of, of everyone. We want to make sure they have facilities to use, pedestrian activities, recreational areas to use on the site. And we also want to look at um, integrating public art uh, within the pedestrian area and public areas. Staff also uh, hired Cosmont companies to conduct a fiscal impact analysis of this initial project. Um, and I know Merlin and Geyer has their own information and they can talk to that or we're trying to compare ours with theirs, but I'm going to touch on the results of the Cosmont analysis really briefly. Um, the project with redevelopment of this site would certainly improve the economic health of the shopping center itself. Depending on the actual taxable retail sales, this could end up being a slight fiscal benefit or potentially a slight deficit to the city. Um, the annual incremental revenues that are expected based on this initial analysis would range from around 800, 850,000 to 1.2 million. However, with the addition of residential on the property, the project would increase the population of the city by maybe about 12%. That increase uh, would cause an increase in the city's expenditures to serve those residential units. Um, and that may range from 875,000 to a, up to a, to a million per year. So what that means overall, the net fiscal impact could have ranged from a slight positive to a slight negative. Some of the other points raised in the analysis, uh, given the, the recent trends downward in retail sales uh, in general and, and on this property, there are poor projections of future retail sales on the, as it exists today, which certainly results in a risk to the general fund. What uh, we're interested in diversification of uses on the site, combined with potential financial tools that can help us make sure this is a positive fiscal impact for the city. The Cosmon analysis talks about potential tools to increase revenues from the project and also maybe help diversify the base. A couple of examples of those are listed here. One would be building a hotel on the site as part of the project. Another would be to establish a community's facilities maintenance fee or enact an entertainment tax. Uh, the last one is very dense again. I apologize, I won't read this whole thing. But um, the design permit is required for the project pursuant to the zoning code. And this is intended to ensure we have a high quality design that is harmonious with surrounding, uh, surrounding uses and that we don't impact surrounding land uses to the extent we can. Um, to approve a design permit, certain findings have to be made here. 
that's consistent with applicable plans and policies, cite the project's not gonna be detrimental to the public health and safety, and that the project complies with the city's design review criteria and maintains the character of the neighborhood and the area. The city in, in pursuing design review for this conceptual application has contracted with an architecture and landscape architecture firm, RRM Design Group. Scott and Matt are sitting next to me here and you're gonna hear from them in a minute. Uh, we asked them to provide a peer review of the design uh, to arrive at what, how the project fits with some of these findings and a second more detailed design review, again, I think I mentioned this earlier, will be done once the formal application is submitted and the full uh, review process commences in January. But in the meantime, uh, we are gonna have RRM discuss some of their feedback and thoughts on the initial design we have. Thank you. And uh, staff is available. We're all here for questions if you have any. Thank you. As John mentioned, um, my name is Matt Audison. I'm with RM Design Group. I'm a planner. I'm here today with Scott Martin, architect. Um, very happy to be a part of this effort and assist your community in reviewing this very substantial project. Um, just a quick presentation overview. Uh, we're going to go over who we are as a firm, uh, sort of our process and framework for design review, um, get into our concept review, hit on some of those bigger topics. Um, and then some, some of the main takeaways, uh, and then end with next steps and questions. Uh, RM Design Group is a multidisciplinary design firm. We have four offices across California. We're fast approaching 150 employees, and uh, we've been in business for over 45 years. We have architects, civil engineers, landscape architects, planners, uh, <coughs> et cetera. Um, I should mention that um, we do work on both public and private projects, and currently we conduct design review on behalf of uh, over uh, two dozen cities across California. So we like to say uh, if it's been pr proposed, we've probably reviewed it from a design perspective. Um, in terms of the design review process, uh, to date, here's sort of the steps uh, that we've taken to get to this evening's meeting. Uh, we've reviewed the conceptual design submittal. Uh, as the applicant alluded to, uh, it is dense. Uh, we, we reviewed it from front to back to make sure we understood it uh, in complete, in the whole complete sense uh, of the term. Um, we've reviewed relevant general plan and zoning code sections, specifically the uh, 17120.070, which is the design review portion. Um, that really sort of guided our design review efforts. Um, we conducted a site tour with city staff uh, to see what's on the ground there today. Uh, and we met with um, both staff and the applicant to hear sort of their ideas and concepts behind the design. And then at that point, we then prepared our conceptual design review. Um, this design review is available in your packet and I believe uh, online as well. So in terms of design review framework, we typically approach these <coughs> from the perspective of how do you break a project down from a design perspective? I'm not talking about two by fours, I'm talking about larger ideas of the design of a project, so massing, layout of streets, articulation of buildings, colors, materials. Again, not the specifics, but taking a step back and, and focusing on the bigger design focus of a project. Mm -hmm. Typically, this includes site planning, architecture, landscape architecture, and sometimes civil engineering. Less frequently, we review floor plans because it involves the interior of a building, but in this case, we've looked at them for this project. One other thing to note is community character um, is particularly important, uh, at least in our interpretation of the city's general plan and the design review. Um, specifically, um, the small town coastal character is highlighted a number <coughs> of times, and <coughs> we've highlighted that throughout our review. To, to dive into a little bit of the nuts and bolts, um, specifically the general plan in its guiding principles talks about community identity, the small town feel, coastal village charm. More specifically, the zoning code gets into how a development uh, site plan, height, massing, architectural style, materials, landscaping, affects the unique coastal character and the distinctive sense of place. Um, as part of our site tour with staff, we, we went across the entire city and uh, we've highlighted some of the key kind of um, elements that we found. Uh, the Venetian Hotel, uh, the Trestles, the Six Sisters, 
uh, and the various buildings in the village that all have that coastal character. It's important to note that community character is often difficult to define. You can't point to one thing and say that is Capitola, but often it's a collection of items. It's the placement of plazas, building adjacency to one another, the use of colors materials. So if someone asked what is Capitola, I don't think someone could point to one thing and say that's it. It's often a collection of items. So it's important to keep in mind. So we started with site planning and this involved the street layout and the applicant touched on this. Um, and I think uh, one of the things that jumped out to us immediately was the sort of lack of information regarding um, bicycle uh, um, connectivity. The city does have a bicycle master plan and there have been recent <coughs> improvements on 38th. And so we've highlighted that in our review that there's opportunity to extend that network and connect to it in the site. Um, the grid pattern um, is, a, is a solid approach to breaking down what currently is uh, a site that is almost impenetrable. You have to kind of zig your way through to get from one side to the other unless you stay on the streets at the edge. Um, 38th Avenue in its current design configuration does do a lot of zigs and zags. Uh, uh, and if it is a in primary street, there's opportunities there, I think, to refine that to make it a little bit more approachable. Um, we also heard about the connection to Target uh, traveling east to west. Uh, in our review of the project, we had some initial concerns on the tunnel-like appearance in portions of it. Um, I know from the uh, 40th Avenue or the area that is just um, uh, west of 41st. Um, there's been a, a great go back there uh, sort of design uh, approach there where they've pushed the building back, they've introduced the appearance of a street, introduced some landscaping sidewalks to make it more pedestrian friendly. I think as you start to travel um, west through the site, uh, you lose that pedestrian orientation. Um, and then we just had some clarifications on sort of alignment with surrounding context, particularly along 41st and the driveways across the street. Um, speaking specifically to the tunnel concept, we wanted to touch on that a little bit more. As I alluded to, um, they pushed the building back on 40th. Um, they provided sidewalks, street trees. These are all things that help make a street more inviting to pedestrians. Um, on 38th, um, for example, um, it's a, a little less inviting. It's a smaller entrance. There's not a street uh, a sidewalk. There's no landscaping other than what's already on 38th. So it seems like there's some opportunity there. <coughs> Block length. <coughs> we took a, a quick analysis on the village. I think it's a, a, a very identifiable, identifiable uh, experience from, from a block length perspective in the city. Um, Typical block lengths in this area range in the 300 foot range. And that creates that walkable experience where you get to the corner and you say, oh, there's the next street, and there's the next street. And looking at the, the, the current uh, orientation of the mall site, that's a little bit more auto-oriented, where you're approaching 600 feet and above. Um, I think the current project has done um, some, a, a great job of breaking that down to make it more walkable, but there uh, perhaps is opportunities to continue to look at how to make the street grid a little bit more walkable. Pedestrian emphasis. Um, as the applicants uh, spoke to, there's a ton of amenities uh, along Town Center Way and 38th. Um, I think those are all phenomenal. Uh, street trees, pedestrian amenities, seating, lighting, uh, among others. Um, I think there is an opportunity, though, to expand that. Right now, it's focused in the core of the project, but how does that project connect to the surrounding fabric of the community? Capitola, 41st, uh, Claire's. I think these are opportunities to kind of really embrace that community context. Um, and then there, there are some Paseo opportunities. Um, the, the applicant has introduced one along uh, Town Square Way, um, but there seems like there could be some other opportunities to again enhance that pedestrian emphasis. In reviewing the site plan, <coughs> there was a number of sort of pad buildings along 41st. Um, and while the applicant has articulated those um, from a streetscape public realm perspective in a very 
uh, uh, um, well thought manner, it seems like there's um, some additional uh, opportunity to connect sort of the main activity area uh, along Town Square Way to 41st. Again, that idea of connecting to the surrounding city fabric um, and uh, really attaching those different development areas within the project. Uh, parking. So the applicant has proposed to uh, restripe um, the existing surface parking. Uh, a number of the surface parking areas are planned to go away in lieu uh, of uh, replacing them with um, structured parking. Uh, those are shared with <coughs> both resident and retail. Um, while the applicant has largely hidden those within the development, <coughs> there are some areas that currently are visible from the exterior. We've highlighted one here, building B, the west elevation, um, that would be visible along Capitola and Claris. Um, again, that's an opportunity to perhaps look at ways in which that could be screened or um, minimize the appearance of um, as one passes by. Um, we also looked at parking. Um, I think parking, particularly along uh, retail areas, provides that presence where you could quickly jump into a store, say you had dry cleaning and you wanted to drop it off or pick it up. There's that opportunity where you can pull in, you can grab it and take off in a, in a fairly quick manner. And the project has proposed uh, a number of diagonal spaces along Town Square Way and a few along 38th. Um, I think there's an opportunity to perhaps balance that ratio a little bit better um, and look for other opportunities to expand that to create that more urban Main Street um, downtown feel, um, such as along 40th, portions of 38th. And then future direction. Um, acknowledging that this is a larger site, not all of it is being a, uh, sort of um, enhanced at this point. Um, leaving a notion of what could happen in the future. I think some of the, uh, the topics that I've touched on allude to sort of that future idea, whether it's sort of creating that Main Street appearance along 40th, um, but, but extending uh, these other ideas where it really informs any future development that could occur. So at the end of the day, if once this site is in the fu some far off future fully developed, it feels like a cohesive uh, development. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Scott Martin. Appreciate that, Matt. Uh, commissioners, good evening. I'm gonna do my best to struggle through technology and I can only guarantee I'll fail somewhere. So um, it, it's been a pleasure uh, working with Merlon Gao, working with the city, um, exploring your city and getting to know it a little bit better. Um, it is clear in your city policy and goals that you hold your community character to um, a very high standard. And we're excited about how this project can start to embody and distinguish itself within, within Capitola. Um, as Matt said, w one of the first things we did was, was a city tour and uh, when you start talking about architecture, you know, when I still talk to my mom about what I do for a living, she says, are you doing Spanish style houses or what do you, and I tell her mom, I, I, half the projects you can't even name a style anymore. And I, th I think that's, that's one of the real unique community character aspects of Capitola is it's a very eclectic mix of architectural styles. This is not Santa Barbara where everything's white uh, mission style with red tile roofs. There's a, there's a great sort of um, community fabric that embraces that coastal Californian um, history and builds upon it in, in new ways that create um, ultimately, especially what you see in your village, a unique series of architectural moments. And, and I think that's, that's what this project wants to embody and I think it, it's heading down that route and um, we're excited to see where it goes. Um, especially from a commercial standpoint, for, th for those of you who have been out to the mall, um, you've seen some of 1980s at its best, um, very large boxes, very um, repetitive forms. I think the applicant has done just a <coughs> fabulous job with some of the commercial architecture in a delineation and articulation of breaking down those boxes into smaller, more manageable, more pedestrian friendly, more human scale elements, the use of materials, um, the use of colors, the sort of this enhanced corner that was talked about by the applicant at the um, cinema really is distinctive architecture. It helps define place as you walk through the project. 
anybody, you could tell anybody to meet me at the cinema and they would know where to go. So, so we really appreciate that and enjoy that. Um, I think there's some room to, to continue along with that and, and hopefully we'll touch upon how that can be extrapolated into a mixed use environment, um, thinking of this as a holistic project and not just a commercial project. Um, we feel it's the residential portion of the project that really sort of lacks that same, same <coughs> distinctive architectural finesse. Um, there's portions of the building that, that continue on for 700 feet um, that's rather long and continuous without a lot of wall plane change, roof plane change. There, there's nods and elements of pulling buildings forward and pushing them back and, and we're looking for ways to, to enhance that even further create distinct architectural moments along those larger building elevations. Um, even in the commercial massing, there's some nods to multi-story. I think this is a great uh, view that shows more than one uh, parapet line. So I think that's, that's a great start towards creating distinctive retail spaces. That's what the retailers want themselves. That's how you're gonna create more viable retail. Um, we've seen other examples of projects like this that, that actually try to even capture a little bit more of that second floor and that, that two-story appearance as, as retail massing is very tall. Everybody, want, even your Starbucks now, you go up uh, at least 20 feet in your ceiling. So the, those building forms can start to expand quite tall and create large foreheads and blank space so that can be just filled with signage. So finding ways to either add some roof elements like they've done on the corner here or um, some two-story uh, architectural elements to help it feel, again, more, uh, more eclectic and more of place. Um, more so uh, with the residential and commercial mix, that's really where we're finding a, a disconnect in the architecture. Um, many of uh, the, the mixed use visualizations almost appear like there's a commercial building with a residential one just stuck right on top of it. There's a lack of sort of vertical integration. Uh, we've looked at some of the um, some of the most successful mixed use environments in California and that residential portion wall over top of commercial can still have elements that come to the ground. There doesn't have to be a cutoff and a setback at every level but finding ways where a building elements can, can go up two or three stories, four stories, then set back, finding ways for um, the, the top, the, the mid portion of the building and a base to all relate to each other without necessarily making uh, wall plane changes. Um, I think that's where we're looking for the, the residential and the commercial to, to come together a little bit more to create a distinctive architectural character between them. Um, same goes for neighborhood compatibility. Um, just as an outsider looking in, when you look around the context on Capitola Road in particular, and you look, um, to me, context means the adjacent urban fabric, the adjacent figure ground, how much building is occupying the, the street frontage compared to what is directly across the street, the proposed project right along Capitola Road is, is quite um, abrupt moving from the public realm directly to a seven story tall building. There are some um, <coughs> fenestration and articulation added there, um, but much of it is within a couple of feet of each other from one level to the next. It's, it's what we call a, a furring or small pop outs without intentional uh, derivative massing changes. Um, we find the even in, in your town, in, in this village, in, uh, in other cities, um, there's, there's a um, placemaking aspect that, that lets us remember, as Matt mentioned, how to get from one street to another. There's a wayfinding mm -hmm. element that um, distinctive, unique architectural character, building forms and public places can help sort of guide us through the great, greater projects or the, gr the greater urban fabric. Um, will you have that in, in your own town? And we're, we're looking for more of that in this project. I, I want to know when I'm, when I'm at a corner, it's, it's something distinctive. It's something where I could tell somebody, meet me at the X, and I don't have to even use a street name because I could say the lighthouse or the town square or the cinema. So we're looking for, for more architectural delineation at those wayfinding opportunities. Um, 
there is some concern along 38th and um, the sort of pedestrian engagement with the, the program. Uh, in the middle, uh, towards the tunnel, there, there is a active ground floor. There's some leasing offices. There's some public uses. But there's also, even out at the corner, um, right at ground level, there's some bedroom windows, there's some living room windows, there's a sense of privacy that, that, that seems to not quite be established yet. And I, I think the, the talented architects will get there, but it was something that we noticed in, in our review um, quite often <coughs> on, a, on a major public uh, street like this, like that we're trying to create, we'll see some sort of transitional element from public to semi-public to private. Uh, we've seen that done through the use of stoops. We've seen that done through raising that floor off of the actual sidewalk elevation. So it's just a different datum point. Um, porches, uh, so small walls and walks. There's, there's a number of different uh, mechanisms and I look forward to seeing um, those sort of articulations come back at, at the next level um, of, of design. Again, uh, I think there's a great sort of palette. I, th I think um, David mentioned this. There's, there's a lot of architectural materials. It, it's a very rich palette, especially at the commercial realm that dilutes itself a little bit when you get into the residential. And what we're looking for is a little more compatibility between the two, a little less distinction. Once again, finding building forms that can go up more than just about to the retail, but carry building elements above. Finding, even though this is one building, it's a series of facades, it's a series of architectural moments along a longer facade that help sort of guide the human at a, a different scale and different element along the street and um, feels less rhythmic. Um, the applicant talked about the opportunity for art and some of their graphic applications. Uh, we really <coughs> think that idea is, is great in nature and versed in, in public art and, and has a, a tie, should have and can have a tie back to Capitola. Um, it feels a little applied right now and we're looking for a little better integration in how that might be utilized. Um, less of a sticker and more of a, a thing, a place, an Instagrammable moment, if you will. Um, briefly, we just touched upon floor plans. There seem to be a couple. Um, this isn't usually what we do in design review, so there just seemed to be a couple that lacked um, sort of some natural light opportunities and amount. Um, there's building code that will cover minimum requirements and whatnot, but there is a natural environmental connection that, Cal that Capitola has, and we want to make sure that this project from a residential standpoint is embracing its location and its place. And we, we feel like that indoor outdoor connection, that natural light connection could, could be enhanced in a couple of different ways. Jumping into the, uh, the, the public realm and sort of the landscape architecture component, um, I think one of the strong um, areas of the project is that the applicant team has focused in on breaking these areas down and theming them, um, the tides and the estuary, and sort of letting those themes kind of inform the design elements that appear within the project, within the public realm. Um, I think there's some opportunities to perhaps enhance or build upon those. For example, um, as shown on the screen, this is the tides portion on the Town Square Way. They have this boardwalk concept that comes out from the building, um, a great connection to the coastal connect character of Capitola. Um, but perhaps there's opportunities to accentuate that, whether it's sort of the appearance of a beach scene or a pirate ship <coughs> playground. Those ideas, again, tying back to the coastal character, even down to the landscape used. Uh, and then the name, um, Town Square. Um, it evokes a certain idea in, some, in people's mind. Um, I think that the, the current proposal um, is, is beginning to head that direction and have a, a strong component where um, a definition of place, where the community can, can gather, where farmers markets can happen. Um, we've provided two examples. Um, I've actually been to both of these and there's a phenomenal uh, farmers market up in Arcata, California, Northern California. It's active, uh, one of the most active I've been to. Um, and then Paso, Paso Robles down on the central coast, they've got this town square 
Um, I've been to some concerts there. They have some summer concert series. Again, this sort of idea of creating a place where the community can gather. Um, I think there's opportunities to expand on that concept. Um, as Scott touched on, um, the building uh, intersection corners do provide that opportunity for wayfinding, and that carries down to the public realm. Um, there's already examples of this in the village. Um, I've, we've highlighted here Stockton Avenue in Monterey, um, this idea where there's seating, uh, uh, landscaping, a little uh, curb, curb change, something that happens that informs someone that this is a, a changing element in the public realm. It's also an opportunity to meet your friend uh, if you're heading one direction or the other, whether on a bike or walking. Uh, and then solar access. Um, John touched on this. Um, I think our concerns are, are, are mainly focused um, on the common spaces in the, pr in the residential, uh, although there are some concerns along um, Town Square Way. Um, shown on the screen here, you've got a common open space, Courtyard C in, in Building A. Uh, that's located generally here. Um, we're concerned that there's going to be a lack of solar access there. Um, in other areas of the project, the, the, the private common open space for the residential has been pushed to the edge or carried down to the ground plane. Um, great opportunities for solar access, and I think some refinement there um, could be merited. And then lastly, public art. I think um, as you drive around Capitola like we did on our site tour, it's all over the place. Murals, the surfboards and the medians, the, I mean, it's been phenomenal. And I think it really helps accentuate the character of place. Um, and I think there's some significant opportunities to both embrace that in the public realm and sort of on the buildings as we discussed earlier. Civil engineering, a little bit dry. Um, and we've touched on um, some of this uh, already, but sort of clarifying that connection and sort of the street width and alignments to their surrounding city context, um, refining the grading. Um, um, in having our civil engineering team review this, there was some areas where the grade seemed excessive. Um, clarify stormwater drainage. Um, some of it um, has a very heavy emphasis on sheet flow or water across the surface towards buildings. Um, just getting some clarification on how that works. Uh, and then um, we heard from the applicant this evening, but I'm sort of verifying with Metro that the transit center location and its alignment is appropriate. Um, some main takeaways, just to kind of wrap up, um, pursue opportunities to further express unique coastal village character and distinctive place throughout the project. Uh, look at refining street alignments and block lengths, enhancing pedestrian connections to the site periphery, site context. Uh, minimize parking structure appearance, look for curbside parking opportunities, expansion, and then leaving future direction uh, for the collective unified development vision. Uh, further refinement of the commercial architecture, enhancing the residential architecture to create greater variety, introduce pedestrian skilled elements at the residential, integrate currently separated residential and commercial portions of the project, more appropriately address project context along Capitola Road, refine articulation and detailing to create individuality in the buildings, embracing these primary intersections, <coughs> on and on. I don't want to belabor it, but um, um, <coughs> next steps. Um, we'll continue to meet with city staff and the applicant to provide uh, any clarifications on the concept design review that we provided. Um, once a formal application is submitted, as John alluded to, RM will work with city staff to conduct a more thorough design review of the revised project. Thanks. We'll be available for questions during the Planning Commission comments. Okay. Thank you. I'll take over for just a minute here while our chair returns. And I think the next step was to have Merlon Geyer uh, respond, if at all. And I would encourage, uh, because we have a lot of people who have been waiting a long time and probably want to, it might be more beneficial to use our time to get some public input. But <laughs> we look forward to work with RRM and addressing all our comments. Great, thanks for uh, that, Ed. So I think um, in light of what Ed says, probably we have a few people, it looks like we want to comment here. So I think what we'll do is we'll um, first ask any planning commission questions to the staff, or do we just want to jump in? I think we should let the public uh, at this let point. Let the public get in, are you okay with that? Yeah. Our and, th and then we can ask the questions. Great. Yeah. So uh, we're gonna start off with those, uh, I believe, let me have to make sure, Chloe will set me straight if I'm wrong. The uh, green cards, the one-minute cards. 
she's shaking her head yes, so that means I'm on track here. So if you want, just want to come up, those of you that want to speak that have a green card, we'll give you a minute to share some input. And, and just let me say, thanks for coming out. Uh, we didn't know how many people were going to get, but it's, it's good to see you here to get your input. So first, I would love to, I will fully admit that I'm beach biased. Um, I would I'm sorry, can you give us your name? And I'm sorry, I am Marie Weiss. Okay. And um, I will fully admit I'm beach biased. I would love to see the hotel idea for the village scrapped. Let's put it here. Um, I think that's a great place for it. I think adding shuttles and metro and all that stuff that's already kind of infrastructure there would be great. Um, I think that would be fantastic. As far as the design goes, um, I would love, to, again, I admit I'm biased, I would love to see more of the Venetian style, Six Sisters style, kind of reflected, kind of what he was saying, um, rather than the progressive contemporary style. I think that's kind of not really what Capitola looks like. Um, and I'm, the only other concern I have was those outdoor areas and the main street, which I think is a great idea, feels kind of hidden inside towers. So I think most people wouldn't really know they were there. Um, it would be hard to find. It, looks, it doesn't look like it's really accessible from the main drags. It seems like you'd have to really kind of meander to find it. So Great. So that's Thanks, all. Thanks. Thank you. And I failed to mention that. If you come up and give us your name so we have that for the record, that'd be great. Hello, my name is Elizabeth Conlon. I live on 47th Avenue. I would just like to state my strong support for this project. I regret that it will be completed five years from now <laughs> when we urgently need 637 units in this area now. I think um, not only is that new housing urgently needed, um, so that young professionals like me who live and work in this community can have affordable options to build our lives here. I think that the shortcomings that were raised, like pedestrian access, are not a reason to hold up or stall the project um, based on the number of residential units that would come out of it. Um, you know, I walk around that mall area. It's not that far from where I live all the time. I don't see a lot of people. I mean, this will make it slightly more friendly, but let's face it, we live in Capitola. We'd rather go walk on East Cliff. So I don't think this is ever gonna become like the premier walking area. Thank you. Thanks, Elizabeth. Could we ask the um, public to write their name down also at the dais? Yeah, we have the roster up there. Right? Yes. I'm sorry, there is a little roster too, if you could sign your name so we have that for our records. Hi, my name is Jessica Evans, and I live in the city of Santa Cruz. I'm a frequent visitor to Capitola, and I like to um, bring my kids to Capitola. We typically ride bikes to Capitola every couple weeks throughout the summer, and um, we're really looking forward to the Scenic Sanctuary Trail coming in, and I just want to remind um, the architectural firm that on 38th Avenue between Brummer and Portola, we're going to have the Scenic Sanctuary protected bike path coming in. So 38th is going to be a very important connection to the community bicycle infrastructure throughout the whole county. Um, so I would ask um, and reiterate the importance of creating more um, bicycle and pedestrian infrastructure and a more welcoming um, space at 38th for the entrance to the project um, for bicyclists and pedestrians who will be um, approaching the project from that corridor um, to come in and to visit um, and to access the amenities. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. Hi, good evening. My name is Tina Andrietta. Um, I don't live in Capitola right now, but I did for almost 30 years. Uh, I would like to see more bicycle and, bicycle and pedestrian paths that also connect with the rail line uh, right there at 38th. I concur with the woman that was behind me, Jessica. Um, I would like the um, architects to, instead of driving around, ride a bicycle and walk around the community. I would also like the whole perimeter to have a wider bicycle and pedestrian path. I ride my bicycle along um, Capitola Road, 41st, Claire's, and um, I almost get hit a lot 
more trees, local trees. The only area that I liked of the, the design was the Macy's. To me, all the other ones look like dead zones. Cars are right up to the um, building. I'd like to see more green area, more park area, more area for people to sit, more areas to park your bicycle. I think more people are riding their, bi their bikes. Um, I'd also like you to consider, um, this is probably way off base, but a little kitty bicycle, you know, the jump bikes like they have on McGregor that that was voted down right here in Capitola along with a little skateboard park. I think that would be important. And um, lastly, I would like to see maybe over highway, excuse me, over Claire's to Trader Joe's and also over to Whole Foods, have a over ramp so we could ride our bicycles and walk. And um, more people want to walk and bike. It, let's get, get out of our cars and when it's more lush, it will be more inviting that we'll want to get out of our cars and to walk and to ride our bikes and to have our dogs and our grandchildren, and that's what I'm advocating. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Senor. Any more green cards? One minute cards. No, one more. Oh, okay. Okay, how about, uh, oh, let's see, that was, uh, we're on the yellow cards for two minutes. Hi, my name is Erin Bernal, and I am a resident of Capitola. I was a member of the General Plan Committee, and a couple of items within this proposal struck my attention, uh, particularly with regard to my history in participating on the General Plan. Uh, the 85-foot request is a stark contrast to every single bi building in this city, um, and the other thing is the uh, proposed density for residential. Uh, I think it's important to keep in mind that on Capitola Road, there are sizable parcels that have been identified as opportunity sites for mixed use development, which would include residential. So as you are thinking about 637 units at the mall, it's critical to consider these opportunity sites on Capitola Road as well as parcels that have been identified for, um, <coughs> excuse me, for infill development. And then going outside of this neighborhood, we also have opportunity sites identified in the um, Bay Avenue area. So keep that in mind. Um, the anticipated population growth of 12% and having that all, um, come together in one small area, that's a huge impact. It's important to review land use goal number five within the general plan that talks specifically about size and scale and maintaining integrity of character um, for the city, which is a very important and often cited element throughout the general plan. Ooh. Did you get that with my voice? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Erin. Yeah. I'm, that's it. I'm just going to sign my name. No, you, did you have something else you want to finish with? Uh, or are, you, are you done? I thought you were done. I'm sorry. No, that's all right. I'm, I'm done. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Thank you, everybody. And my name is Andrew Goldenkrantz. Um, I'm here with an organization called COPA. We represent 28 nonprofits throughout the county, faith institutions, school districts, community organizations. And one of our core values um, is affordable housing. I personally uh, am a resident of Aptos. I'm a member of Temple Bethel, which is a founding member of COPA. And we have 60 of our congregational families who are Capitola residents. Um, I'm struck by the beginning of the staff presentation where you said the first public benefit that you identified was housing affordability. And we know that the county is 11,000 units short of affordable housing. The median income, household income in Capitola is $69,000. And so I'm wondering for 637 units of market-driven housing, 
who gets to live there? Current residents of Capitola won't get to live there. The teachers that I hire and train for a living won't get to live there. Nurses and firefighters won't get to live there. And so I really wanna stress that for a project of this scope that, <coughs> pardon me, that to achieve a substantial community benefit, you wanna make sure that this housing is gonna have the maximum number of affordable units for people who currently live here. Um, if the goal is to attract technology workers from over the hill, then you are inevitably looking at more people sitting on the freeway, locked up in traffic, trying to get back and forth to work. And I don't see anybody arguing that that improves the quality of life around here. So I would stress, and we are happy to work with staff, with commissioners, with city council members over time to find strategic partners that will help us to increase the affordability quotient for the maximum benefit for the people who are already here. Thank you very much. Thanks, Andrew. You can go ahead and step up. He's signing his name, great. Um, hello, Chair Welch, members of the commission. My name is Ken Thomas. <clears throat> I'm a COPA leader with uh, Peace United Church in um, Santa Cruz. I'm also a long-term county resident. Um, as Andrew was saying, uh, COPA, how we work together in relationship is we share stories among our member institutions within the Monterey and Santa Cruz County area. And from those stories come up pressures on our families and our neighbors and our loved ones. And one of the stories that we hear over and over again is the lack of affordable housing. Um, and um, COPA is um, very much in favor of producing housing of all types throughout the county, but especially housing that would um, benefit those that are most vulnerable in our community. Um, with this project, I urge the city to, um, and the public, to, um, uh, to, to really work toward the production of low and very low income housing. <clears throat> Usually in the affordable housing component, moderate rate housing is allowed to satisfy that requirement, but we would like to see further um, um, housing that would be created for people that make um, less money, 80% or less than the median income. And with that, I'll end. And again, we're, we're very anxious and uh, we wanna work in relationship with everybody on this and um, we wish uh, all the luck. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Okay, any more yellow cards out there? How about orange cards? There's one. Hi, I'm Sheree McCoy, 21 year resident and homeowner here in Capitola. And I know the planning department's mission statement includes preserving the historical character, character of Capitola. The new library doesn't reflect the charming Six Sisters look <laughs> or the iconic Mediterranean look of the Rispin Mansion and Venetian Hotel. The new Capitola Mall proposal is the typical formula of mixed use tall building with a street through the middle. Malone Geyer, uh, they're very proud of their many successes where they have developed land in Los Angeles, Mountain View, and other cities <coughs> where tall buildings and high density housing are welcome. We do not have the infrastructure to accommodate 637 residential units and the 1,100 cars that come along with them. The proposal does not look like Capitola at all the contemporary motifs look like any newly developed land in America. The village look presented here in no way looks like Capitola Village. There's more streets, the grid, Main Street, Times Square, city look, urban downtown, major public streets. We can do better than that. Say no to Santana Row. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Roy Johnson. 
Um, I'm a 40-year resident of uh, Capitola, almost 40 years. And I live right across the street from the mall. And I have watched, when I moved in, there were cows across the street. So I have seen the development of the Balm's uh, Ball Branch and all of that. And so I looked with great interest at this. I'm basically in favor of the whole project. I think that uh, any walk through the mall these days, uh, it's a lonely place and needs a little peppy energy. I like the idea of the road going through. Um, I think that's an excellent uh, uh, change up. Um, and uh, the apartments on 30, Ca I live right on Capitola Road, so literally I'm like right across the street. The, the uh, 38th and Capitola Road apartments, um, that is not a good look. That is way too much. Across the street are one story little things. So that's a major bump. Uh, I'm not opposed to high buildings, but I think you can do a lot with architecture. And I don't see um, this look like a cut and paste uh, thing of, for the architecture. And generally, I would say all of the architecture, uh, we need to hold, uh, hold them to a better standard. They, they are coming to us a little disadvantaged because they're mall developers, so that's what we're getting. And we have our community here that um, would like to see something very unique and very different. Um, I'm also the chairman of the uh, Arts Commission here in Capitola. And I would uh, encourage the developers to do their own project. Uh, public art is not uh, putting uh, paintings on the walls. It's a very specific guideline that um, uh, is in place. And we would love to meet with someone from the project to make sure that they understand that uh, public art is a very specific thing that they're required on this project and it's a fairly substantial amount of money with uh, what they're doing. Um, so I would encourage them to come to us with, uh, with their own project. Uh, we can do it uh, through the commission, but I'd love to see them come up with something. Um, and uh, you know, the, the, Capito the 41st Avenue area in terms of Capitola has always been like the other, okay? Capitola is the village. 41st Avenue is like the other place. The, and um, we have a very unique opportunity right now uh, to uh, change that with this development. Um, and specifically with the name of the development. <coughs> um, you know, we have the village and we have an area, the upper village, where Gales is. And that kind of pulls the village, and it kind of pulls the upper village, it kind of makes it part of the community. Okay, I have heard nothing about this presentation that is pulling this project, connecting it to the community. It's still the other. Okay, but with a simple uh, appropriate naming of the project, I think we could change that. Uh, West Village now becomes uh, the village, the upper village, the West Village. Now it becomes one village, just with that one naming. It becomes part of that. Where are you gonna go shopping? I'm going, sh I'm going shopping at the West Village. And do you know you're going to Capitola? And you know where you're going in Capitola. And I would really encourage a further thought. Uh, we're kind of getting the mall developer <coughs> name. And I would love it if, if we were thinking about Capitola and the village. Great, thank you, Mr. Johnson. And I, I'm thank sure you. that they'd be interested in working with our, our Cultural Commission to uh, yeah, we look forward to that. <coughs> okay, any more uh, people that like to share comments? Oh, there we go. <coughs> Hello, folks. Uh, I'm Ron Burke. Um, like you, former Planning Commissioner, I really appreciate the time that uh, you folks have put together to give us something that's got some feasibility to it. 
Um, change is definitely overdue. The mall is definitely overdue. It is a dying place. We've got to do something with it. So welcome to, um, we're welcome to do something here. I like the vibrancy of the project. Uh, it addresses needs in the general plan update um, committee I was part of. Open airspace between buildings, community open spaces, it's approachable. Relocating the transit center away uh, from 41st Avenue. A development somewhat spread out, some landscaping, emergence hardscape, and distribute circulation. Those are all really wonderful things. <coughs> I do have some concerns though. I think they've been largely echoed, and I apologize if I'm repeating something here that I've already said. There's a lot of sc scale and massing of the, the block buildings is very large. It doesn't really belong in Capitola, that, that kind of massing. The mass is begging for tiered setbacks and breaking up into sections. Uh, the needs um, significantly more building arch articulation. Capitola also is not urban. It's, it's lacking in some identity. It doesn't really identify with Capitola at its core. We need lower heights and not shadow spaces. You should consider destination identity, including a hotel. I think it was a really good idea to help balance the daytime and the evening traffic and people just staying and parking. Um, it's missing a lot of ways the character and charm of Capitola, which has been alluded to by several people. It needs more unstructured space with meandering pathways and natural elements. Parking, that's a whole separate issue by itself I won't get into, everyone talks about that. <coughs> it's not an island, the circulation ingress and egress of the property from the surrounding area needs to be seriously considered. 41st Avenue, aside from Highway 1, is the busiest thoroughfare in the whole county. It's already got problems of its own. Adding to that, it's not an island, we have to seriously consider those impacts. Um, we need to also limit the sightline distances of the roads to discourage speeding through traffic. People will go through the community if they can to get someplace faster. And also, it might be a good idea to diversify some of the revenue generating businesses for the city, including professional businesses, to balance again the evening and the daytime activities. Uh, incremental, incremental costs to the city with excess housing. I think that's an incomplete thought there. Um, make what I really want to make sure is that this one single project does not consolidate all of your arena numbers and affordability housing in just one location. Those need to be spread out throughout the city. So I hope and strive for the collective best for our city. And remember what Mike Termini told us, told us, though you're not elected, you're appointed. You are the ones who form the fabric of our community visually that we see. So we leave it up to you to make the right decisions for us as a community. This is your one chance in our lifetime to make sure the project is done right. And please don't let us down. Thank you. Thanks, Ron. Okay, anybody else? We are gonna have other opportunities. You have the city council meeting coming up, but you're here already, so there we go. I didn't plan to say anything, but here I am. Uh, my name is Lori Hill, and um, this project's time is due. And um, I appreciate the presentation tonight. I appreciated the presentation you did at the mall. Um, you're, you're, you're pulling us in, you're drawing us in. Um, I really appreciated what you gentlemen had to say because you're the brains <laughs> um, and you have a way of putting the right words on some of the thoughts that we've kind of conceptualized. This thing about making sure that there's natural light in people's living space, you know, you can see that in these projects. We can't by just looking at the drawings. So thank you for that kind of work. Um, it, I valued it. Um, uh, affordable housing, yes, yes, yes. Um, a lot of affordable housing at the site. I mean, transportation's there. Um, uh, it, it's an important con uh, part of this. We also know it's a delicate balance between residential and commercial in order to make this uh, project affordable to the developer and also make it work. Uh, but I'm also sensitive to uh, making sure that the revenue that is produced at this site um, covers the expenses that the city's going to be incurring um, to support this site. And we know that housing doesn't always bring in enough revenue to cover the city services that are necessary for it. So I know it's a delicate balance, uh, but to make sure that our city services get the funds that they need um, to serve the site and to, and to best serve the community. Uh, public art is really important to me. Um, I appreciated everything that Roy Johnson said. Um, I would like the public art to reference um, the area's roots and the fact that it, it is sitting on exactly where the Begonia, uh, the Begonia fields were 
uh, acres and acres of begonia blossoms. I would love to see some reference to that in, in the public art. Um, and uh, I am looking for rotational gallery space uh, for art. Um, I just rep I just put helped put together the Capitola Plein Air event that was a Capitola Arts and Cultural Commission uh, uh, item. And you know one of the things that came up is well you know where could we show our art for sale after the event? Um, so rotational uh, gallery space would be great. And thank you for your work. And I know you have a lot of work in front of you. Thanks, Lori. Okay. Anybody else? All right, seeing none, then I guess I'll come back to the commission and I should go back to um, RMG, or I'm sorry, uh, Mar Marlon Guy, or do you, would you have something you need to respond to that was said by, or is it something we can, uh, I guess, glean out of you as we have our questions and stuff? Is that all right? Okay. We'll, we'll have any other questions. Okay, great. Then I'll bring it back to, um, Looks like I think we're back to planning commission to have discussion and uh, <laughs> questions. Or questions or just discussion? Uh, uh, some questions, for if you have questions first and then we'll have our I discussion. Have questions from both staff and Merlon Geyer. Um, the, uh, I'm, I, I'm curious for Merlon Geyer, I guess, the first question is, is it, where did you come up with the number of 637 units? Was that driven by something? I believe that's exactly 20 units per acre. That's the maximum number of housing and units we're allowed to have on the site per the current zoning guidelines. So your goal was to put, uh, your preference was to maximize the, the housing you know, on the site? That was the goal we gave to our architects was, you know, we're allowed 20 units per acre here on site. That's what it's zoned for. Uh, give us a shot on what we think that looks like on the site. And that was a, that was a starting point. Um, did you have any uh, questions or concerns about the, the Cosmot uh, um, financial an analysis, <laughs> rebuttals, anything? Well, I, I think it's I think it's early on to, um, <clears throat> and I, we've been working with Cosmot, and and we also have an economic analysis done as well. Um, it's just early on, and type of retail is going to drive that economic process as well. So, um, but we will work through that. With no problem with their math or their assumptions or anything, we will work through their their okay. assumptions. Um, did you um, were you responsible for the uh, San Antonio Center in Mountain View? Was that your, one of your projects? <laughs> that was me. <coughs> so yeah, so I, I I'm glad because I took a trip up there to right. take a look at it, and I will have some comments. I just want to make sure that was yours, so I I can. It comment is. On yeah, we just right. completed phase two on that project. It was that was a phase project from our acquisition in 2010, uh, through recent completion of phase two, uh, just this year. So I talked to I went in one of the apartment buildings and talked to staff there, and they were unaware of your name. They, they well, we recently sold the apartment complex to Brookfield, and so yeah. they are the new owner, and they probably don't know my name. Well, I mean, or Malone guy, guy right? I mean, right, right. It's right. a new, it's a new management company that's been there for less than a month. Um, d the uh, um, the the amount of parking that you have, the physical uh, lots, I is that appropriate? Is it excessive? Uh, is that is there room to cut into that? Uh, it actually represents a significant reduction from the parking that's there today. Mm -hmm. There's approximately five per thousand uh, parking ratio on the site today, as required by the, the REA, the agreement from all the major tenants on the site. We're proposing to reduce that uh, retail parking ratio down to four per thousand. And again, that's likely the minimum that uh, companies like Kohl's, Target, Ross, Macy's will accept as a parking ratio at the center. So we see it as a, as a great reduction. In addition, we're looking into a shared parking analysis that will look at not only um, the entertainment uses as well as regular retail uses and trying to uh, show, demonstrate, and as a part of the, the uh, environmental analysis, uh, how we can share parking on site. We, we think that four per thousand is, is a pretty good goal to get down to from five per thousand today. And, and again, we're trying to internalize a lot of that parking as well and disperse it throughout the site. The, the, because we're using some of the parking areas for housing and other entertainment uses and other major tenant uses, um, we're trying to, we're trying to uh, 
create the parking field that's out in front on 41st where it exists today. By the way, we're just not restriping that. We're completely redoing that in order to, to if you saw in the, the plan previously, we're actually installing planters. And there's water quality treatment down the centers of all these parking areas. So, so we're, we're trying to capture and redo all that parking. But our parking ratio, what we see is a, is a great reduction from what's there today. But the minimum is going to be required by the anchor tenants that have site plan control. So uh, the reason I ask is I'm not sure whether or not uh, uh, the, those, there's going to be excessive parking. In other words, there's going to be plenty of parking or whether or not there's going to be spillover into adjacent neighborhoods or adjacent shopping centers because there's not enough parking supplied. I don't know. We don't see that. We, we think that we think there's adequate supply of parking and a di and the parking that we're providing for the apartment. There, there's plenty of parking available for them as well. Um, if there's if there's a need for we additional weekend parking, we find that those residents tend to fill up the surface park, not fill up, but use some of the excess parking that's around the site. Um, but we don't think there's any spillover concern whatsoever. Thank you. And I, and I just have one question for RM, RRM. Uh, you're <laughs> so I uh, am dangerous because I have uh, one yeah. one lousy <laughs> textbook that I read. <laughs> And it seems like your your uh, recommendations like match up pretty well with what's in here. Even though this was written in 1961, I guess it's still appropriate. My one of the questions that it w struck me as odd, though, was your block length concern, because when I l read the block length section of this, it seemed to be more of a concern of um, the d evolution. You know, you you want to be able to have not dead zones and have it really had more of a New York yeah how is this gonna the city gonna evolve and I didn't think that applied to this approach is, is that is, uh, could you talk a little bit more about block length uh, s certainly I, I'll, I'll do my best and I'm a huge Jane Jacobs fan so um, I, I it's a great read it's um, I think still very pertinent to any urban fabric in, in any city today um, uh, the, the block length is about the pedestrian experience, and that, that's ultimately, um, you can look at a number of, of developments and, and the, the city um, geometry and say, hey, 600 might work, and, and in places it could, depending on what the experience along that 600 feet is. Um, our, I think where we saw concern, especially along 38th, where it's a primarily residential environment, there's not a lot of engagement for the pedestrian beyond a leasing office and some, some vehicular circulation. So it's, um, it's not a very pedestrian friendly environment. And, and that's, that's the ultimate goal. I think there's some great strides that the applicant is doing to take what is, would be defined as a super block anywhere else as the mall and look for ways to start to slice and dice that already. I think there may be even further opportunities for that to make sure the pedestrian um, it is engaged along the way. I, I hope that addressed your No, question. yeah, that, that does, thank you. Um, I think those are all the, my questions. Okay, any questions for either RRM or the one guy? Ready to go. Yes, sir. On the, on the theater, being the focus of the central part of the town square. You know, we read about theaters just are really having a difficult time in this day and age. What do you propose if the theater doesn't make it? If it's not a viable business that continues to operate there? We've seen a great change in theater operations over the last 20 years, and we've been doing this for with the Lone Guy for the last 20 years. And we've seen a great resurgence in the theater and how they they do their marketing and what they the experience that they provide, and the uh, the bigger chairs, the fewer people per audience, the reserved seating, the amenities they provide in terms of sound systems, just the different type of environment they're providing, has led to a resurgence in theaters, and they're having great success these days. In fact, we're finding theaters are are. Um, wanting to be as a, the center point of most of our redevelopment projects, and they're successful doing that. Uh, but they're just one component. By having that entertainment feature offered at the center, we're seeing a resurgence of nighttime and weekend activity 
that then also help to support the restaurants that also want to be at the site. These restaurants want to be where these entertainment venues are, and so they build on each other. And now it becomes now it becomes a place to be, and that's for entertainment and for dining and for activity. So we're seeing these these theaters these days really be uh, the driver of a different component. Retail's changing, and so we see less of the large format retailers and more of an experience driven. Uh, these lifestyle centers, they, they, they're trying to create an environment that people want to go hang out in. And having an entertainment theater as a part of that is, is, a, is, is a center focal point of that strategy. And if, if they go, I guess we just don't see them going away. We see them an integral part of our redevelopment. So obviously you don't know what your tenants will be right now, but to include family-oriented type entertainment, whatever that may be, I know you have the dog park, oh. and, but what, what else? Do you propose in there what what kind of commercial structures will you have that can accommodate those kinds of things? We're just now beginning to scratch the surface of, of the leasing uh, activity because we have the Target, the Macy's, the Colt, and we will have a theater. There is strong tenant demand from the soft goods retailers, the type of tenants that would be in this kind of a redevelopment, as well as uh, the, the smaller shop, the local. Uh, mom and pop type tenants that are also drawn to these. We have a lot of opportunities for smaller local businesses to be a part of our center as well. Local restaurants, but also national tenants uh, to create a really good balance uh, in here. Um, so, so we don't have any tenant names today that are coming that we can announce that so and so is coming. We we don't have any. We, we just we don't. But that that will be our next process as soon as we really finalize where the buildings are going to be, where their frontages are, what signage they have. Um, th then we'll start, and by the way, this is all conceptual. I mean, the idea is that we'll have a tenant. Gee, I need, for, you know, I need a bigger space. I need a smaller space, but we really want them there. Then we start massaging the plan and start fixing how that uh, uh, works for those tenants. And I talked about the facade changing as well for those individual tenants. So there'll be a lot of changes as we begin to talk to these different tenants. On the main street, it doesn't appear that the area is wide enough to accommodate like outdoor restaurants, things of that nature. I mean, the, the scale, tell from the yeah, the restaurant. scale's hard, right? Because we're looking at something, and so we see something on a screen. But uh, what we have are areas that are, you know, thousands of square feet. The the sidewalks have been designed not only with extra space on the corners and where we anticipate having restaurants and all these plazas. We've actually designed if we can blow up into those landscape plans, and I think you have blow ups in your set too. You can see where we're identifying outdoor eating areas specifically built into the landscape design to accommodate those outdoor eating areas. At one of the corners of the main street, we actually cut into the building to create more kind of a covered but yet outdoor dining area. So we're, we're really focused on, on creating those, where's the right place for the restaurant to be and then creating the outdoor dining uh, around it, but still plenty of space for people to circulate on the, the landscape or the, the hardscape around those dining areas. It, it, integral part is the outdoor dining space. Are parking garages resident only? No, they're shared. Uh, we're working on the, the amount of sharing but the idea is that the ground floor and potentially even the second floor would be for uh, the retail tenants and then the, the, the area above. Or, again, depending on um, how we structure the, the, the residents or who the residence is, is it senior or is it uh, whatever, to where maybe there's even less of a parking demand, we can work on shared <laughs> uh, parking agreements with the residential as well. Share, they're shared. What's the phasing? I wish I knew. The, the, I've got a, we've got a general idea that, that the Target, the Coles, the Macy's, they stay open during the redevelopment as well as the perimeter, the Ross, the, the parts that are not owned. We, the, the residential over the retail component, that has to, that's the longer build. That's probably what he talked about. That's the 24 to 30 month construction. It just takes longer. And so, and that construction has to get done before we can open the ground floor retail tenants. So that's the longer part phase one and then extending to phase two. Phase one, we can see actually doing the demo and building that main street early, or at least the theater component of it, the pads out on the street, and the area in front of Macy's and, and Target, potentially. We, those are single story wood frame buildings. Those can go pretty quickly, as well as the redevelopment of the, of the parking areas around there and the relocation of Metro. So that's kind of the phase, big phase one, and phase two is the continuation of the residential. Then there's a second phase residential up against the Target there, that would be the third phase residential, and that's really market-driven demand when, when that comes online. We can't bring s that many housing units onto the line at one time, so that's gotta be phased.
but the first phase of the residential will be the one with a retail tenants facing 41st. Okay, thanks. Courtney? Um, I think it's, a <laughs> first of all, I really enjoyed reading all the feedback you guys had for the whole development. It was, I agreed with almost every point. And I really enjoyed your package as well. <laughs> I liked all the renderings. It, it, um, a, a, a big question in my mind in reading through everything was why is the, the housing concentrated primarily in one area? Is, is there any way to pull it out over um, the, the, the buildings that you have acquired? So like the, the Coles and, and I know those are leased right now, but is there any way to, or within the renovation, put some more housing over there and decrease the height? We can't build over Coles mm -hmm. and we can't build on top of or on top of the Macy's or Target parcels. So, so that was a constraint of ours that we couldn't build over. Um, for, fin for the lease reasons I mentioned earlier with the Chili's and the Ulta, we need to leave them in place. They have long-term lease control. So that prohibited us from tearing down that section of the mall to build over top of there. Mm -hmm. So what are we left with? We're really left with a Seritage <coughs> that we acquired uh, next. And so it, it just based on site constraints, we still needed uh, the, the retail tenants that we want to bring and that want to come to the center that are, are gonna face 41st, they still need parking in front of their store too. So we still needed a park, some kind of a parking field uh, to satisfy those tenants' uh, demands for parking. So that really left uh, the area kind of in between the target parking structure, which has to remain, can't build over the top of, and, and where we're kind of stuck by needing the parking for the retail. And, and then also constrained by where we take the main street. So we were, after looking through this and going through by the, really a lot of different schemes trying to figure this out, um, that was where the, 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 the residential needed to land to work within the constraints of the rest of the site. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, again, we take to heart the comments received in terms of massing and, and design and blockiness, the need to create you know, more uh, sun angles and, and address some of the architecture. We get it. Next, next go around. You know, we'll 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 be we'll be addressing all this potential step backs and all that. We'll we'll be addressing all that. Um, uh, I think another level of that question would be just the overall a deeper dive into the experience of living in a place like this. It's very foreign for people you know that have grown up here. We don't we don't live in seven story structures. So, um, in coming home per se the end of the day you're parking in a big structure you're parking in this expansive parking lot you're walking to your home you know you're walking down this very hall you know hallway possibly to get to your apartment I'm, I'm curious as to you know I think you guys mentioned it in your review um, the lack of outdoor space the lack of engagement with the outside world you know and just in in really developing that as the living experience of actually participating as an inhabitant in this structure. <laughs> so, so that's certainly something we look at and try to design for. The way these parking structures are designed is that you're typically your parking space is on your level. If I'm on the fourth level, my parking stall is on the fourth level. So I drive up to that level and I'm not walking through the hallway, I'm just walking straight into my, my unit yeah. that faces out. So the idea of the having this wrapped product with this parking structure hidden from everyone else uh, that allows easy access for that pedestrian if I'm grocery shopping, I show up with my bags, I walk out on my level, straight into my apartment that is now facing outdoors. And so plenty of sunlight. Yeah, there's probably a few units that need some work, but those are few and far between. The majority of them are, you know, brightly lit. The idea that people then, they don't have to take care of a yard, but these these apartments are highly amenitized. Not only are they amenitized with with uh, with barbecue areas and fitness areas and, and other pools, and you know, the residential B has a rooftop uh, a rooftop deck on top of the parking structure <laughs> with a pool area and the cabanas with ocean views out, you know, so it's outdoor space. The other area has a courtyard carved out facing 41st with outdoor barbecues and a pool. And, and so these are amenitized areas. In addition to that, hey, I don't have to get my car to go to the store or to work out or to get a cup of coffee or to take my drive. I walk out my front door and I'm, I take the elevator down the ground floor. I'm there. It's right there. Or if I want to walk my dog or a dog park or a restaurant, it's all right here. So those are the highly amenitized areas that draw people to these type of units, and they're, they're very successful. Mm -hmm. and, and they're not for everybody. There's a lot of people that would rather live in a single story house with a nice yard and a garden. Other people don't want any part of that. They want someone to take care of all that for them. They want the amenities, and they want, they want this kind of living. And so it's, it's different, 
It's different for some of us older folks that, you know, gee, I can't imagine living there. But the amenities make up for the loss of having a yard. Yeah. Um, I, is there any potential to utilize the height that you guys are trying to achieve, the seven stories in some type of ar ar architectural fashion to where it would be not so just stacked up and down? And I think that was addressed in your review as well. But it's, it's a massing exercise. Yeah. And how can you step and create pushbacks and planes and <coughs> separate levels and step backs from streets? And yes, you can do that. And yes, <laughs> we would be looking at that. Okay, so. great. Um, let's see. Uh, um, as far as charging stations for vehicles, I think it, you touched on that with. We didn't even scratch the surface on all of the sustainability features going into from low impact development to uh, utilizing solar and recharging stations. You know, there's the California Green Initiative that, you know, there's standards that are built in for not only bike lockers and bike parking and locked areas, but also then, you know, uh, shower facilities for the people that are biking there and around and, and all the other, you know, the, the lead equivalent that is the green building standards, all those get built into the project. Um, in terms of stormwater treatment and, and permeability of services and all, all of that gets built in. That, that's a, we'll be taking a deep dive with staff uh, on all of that to make sure that we're, that we're hitting all the, the marks with that. But it's, it's, a, it's a big part of what not only the public expects, but our residents expect and that we provide. Um, let me see. Uh, I think that's good for me right now. Thank you very much. How are we doing now, Commissioner? Do you have any questions? Are we doing questions? Or yeah, we're just doing questions. questions. No questions. Okay. <laughs> any any other questions? I think we have to give him a rest. Yeah. Great. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, David. And uh, <coughs> all right. Comments. You've been sitting there awful quiet. You want me to go? Uh, I, I I just wonder what we should do here because we've been here two hours and the uh, the diminishing returns when a meeting lasts for too long. Um, so I'm maybe I'll hit a couple points, but I, you know, I hope we don't go on for a couple hours here tonight. If, if we are going to go on for a couple hours, we should probably take a break or, or do it another time. Uh, I don't know how much I, uh, my comments are pretty brief. Okay. I don't know what. All right, well, let's what give it a try. So big picture. I did take a break though, so. <laughs> <laughs> big picture, uh, I think <coughs> it's a terrific uh, response to the need to um, re-envision uh, that property and I've been involved from the standpoint of chairing the general plan committee, involved in the preparation of the new zoning ordinance. Um, I feel that this is a really uh, excellent effort to uh, accomplish what we were, most of the things that we were trying to accomplish in those processes. At least it's a great start. I'm not gonna get into the the, uh, all the details of the design, I think it's too early, and I don't, I'm, there are professionals here that are way better at that than I am. So you know, I kind of look at uh, more policy issues. I do think that the way the staff has gone about this is terrific in terms of hiring experts to interface, and we've got, we've got a team here, and it's a collaborative effort. That's what I like about it. A lot of our big developments have been you know, really contentious, and I see this one so far at least, going through in a much more, I mean, there's some people who aren't gonna like it, there's always gonna be people, but it, it seems to be processing in a very, in a great way. Um, I have issues with the name, and uh, as did Roy. Um, first of all, Capitol is never referred to as a town. Los Gatos is a town, I think maybe um, Los Altos might be a town, but we're a village. We never use the word town, so, <laughs> to, to suddenly have a town square doesn't make, doesn't work for me. It's also not a town square. We don't have uh, any official uh, buildings there. We don't do any hangings there. We don't. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not what they usually yeah. do Depends in town on squares, project, I think, yeah. Yeah, historically, <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's not really a town square in function. We don't, we're not a town in name. So <coughs> I think we need to work on that a little. Come up with, and all, oh, my other reason is, is that, that Scotts Valley's been working for 10 years on its town square. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, we don't need two town squares in the uh, county of Santa Cruz. So anyway, affordable housing is a big issue for me, and I think you responded to the first time you came here, and we talked about that, and all of a sudden you came back with 637 units. So <coughs> I, I think that's great. As far as the affordable component, 
I think it should be rental for sure. Don't get into any of those. Uh, it's for sale, my recommendation, affordable units because there are too many problems with them. So we need to have a lot of affordable rental units. And I think you can be creative in terms of how you do this. Um, the, that's what happened when the Villas of Capitola, which is a project on 46, um, came through and it had an affordable housing unit and they kind of came up with their own plan. And I think you can work on something uh, creative, but I think it's really important and that's a key element to the project as far as I'm concerned. As far as the, if you wanted feedback on the public spaces, the, the standard for um, the height exception is pretty vague and I just looking at what's evolving here, I, I think you're going to satisfy it quite easily. So, uh, I mean, to me, it's not really a big issue. Okay. I got a, a, a feeling <coughs> comment, so I don't know. You may, may run in, uh, run a little long. I'm usually pretty short, but <laughs> this time, uh, okay. this time I think I have a few things to say because I mean, staff asked us to comment on the RRM uh, issues, and so I it took some time to actually do that. And first of all, I, the big picture is um, the the Cosmot. Mont analysis disturbed me a lot. <laughs> um, it looks like we're going to lose our downtown, or our, excuse me, our village, town square, our, our village hotel. Uh, Swenson seems to be backing off on that now. So our uh, opportunities for fiscal um, solvency are becoming more concerning. So when I look at this mall, I say, wow, okay, here's our opportunity to get healthy. And then the, the analysis says, no, 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 you, this could be a 75K a year loss. And so I just assume we redistrict this agricultural and turn it back into begonia fields. <laughs> if, that's the, if that's the answer. And so before I would want to go for this, I'm sh I'm, you mentioned you're working with, uh, with, with that and you're going to try to figure all this out. But, you know, I would want to know that the city council has already created this area as a community facilities district so that, you know, we are in fact making a lot of money on this. You've got the hotel. We know it's going to be a successful one because that'll get us a, low, a lot of TOT. Um, or the analysis says it's, ba it's, it's largely related to the size. And so, you know, you go from 637 units to 437 units or some other number that says, okay, now this project gives us a lot of, you know, a lot of income. Uh, and to me, that's the big issue. Um, with regards to my overall impression of this, I was, I was also concerned with the concentrated population there and the sudden 12% increase in our population, all the unknown issues that could, um, that could create um, just by that sudden change in our, in our population. Um, I, um, I know you went to a trouble of creating a, a, a try to create a, a smaller community of a, a visual uh, uh, area that's very pedestrian friendly and whatnot. I'm a little concerned some of the comments <laughs> I think rung true that this is uh, uh, it kind of faces inward that it's all on this town square way that Capitola Road is kind of like shouldered out perhaps and that uh, there's not a lot of uh, a lot of reaching out to the surrounding areas. Uh, I, I, I agree with that comment. Um, I think a lot of um, RRM's comments are, like I mentioned before, are, are based on a, a common um, uh, urban, urban design truisms which to me boils down to just the notion of eyes on the sidewalks, right? That's kind of her thing, eyes on the sidewalks. So uh, I'm looking at uh, your 40th Street frontage. Um, yeah, you have residential over that, but it's not really connected to the street. You know, is that a, is that a sidewalk? Is that an area where, you know, you talked about stoops and, you know, are there gonna be eyes on the street? now? Eyes on the street aren't just the residents looking over the street, but it involves multi-use, which you, you've touched on that. So we want we want people there. Mm -hmm. 
using different things. You want multiple ages, which the portable, uh, affordable housing thing would, uh, would address. We want to be there all hours so that people are coming and going. And you want multiple incomes. I mean, Jane Jacobs talks about old buildings, but effectively that just means low income. So um, I would just in general, in terms of a general comment, take the eyes on the sidewalk thing to heart and, uh, and go with that. Having said that, however, I then visited San Antonio Center and I said, well, this is great. I went in and, and looked into, walked into the apartment complex, which seems to be very much, this seems to be very much based on that. And I was very impressed. Uh, it's very welcoming. Like you say, there are a lot of areas for, for people to gather. I saw a lot of, a lot of people using it. I was there at four o'clock in the afternoon on a Wednesday and there were people there with their laptops tapping away and they, everybody felt very comfortable. <laughs> so, so I guess I, you know, there, there's eyes on the halls, so to speak. So I, I think the residential in and of itself is, is okay. Um, like I say, I was very impressed with it. Um, I did take the time to interview people while I was there and I was concerned about this eyes on the sidewalk thing. So I asked some people, well, are you, are you concerned? There's, there seems to be some dark alleyways or you know, service entrances and this and that. Do you feel comfortable walking around here? And the answer is yes. There's, there's no fear of being mugged or crime or this or that. that people very feel very comfortable in there, even though maybe all of the you know, specific details of this book aren't adhered to. So, so I, I, I that, so that doesn't concern me as much. Um, they were concerned about the traffic, that they can't cross San Antonio or El Camino or whatever, that <coughs> because the, it's, the, this, it's not connected to the surrounding area. So when she said safety, she says, yeah, I'm scared to heck to death to cross the street because it's just not, you know, I have to jaywalk here and there because there's no proper crosswalks and this and that. So um, that, I thought that was an interesting um, comment. So we, we want, connectivity to adjacent business you want, to, you want to be able to get across the street to the owl property and the king plaza and go you know by the way it's no longer the bamboo garden it's now the kono palace or oh, kono, yeah. Yeah. anyway people are going to want to go across that street and eat there because it's great um the bike pass the, the, i talked to a biker and he says yeah i ride my bike but i walk it through here because you don't ride a bike through a parking lot it's too dangerous so um so that I think all the biking comments were <coughs> valid. Uh, the dog park was a huge hit. So I highly encouraged the dog park. It was busy. I talked to the dog people. They <laughs> said, uh, and I'm sorry I'm getting into the details, but <laughs> they're designing this dog park. They said, so they said, don't break it up in the middle with all these patios and things. They, dogs need to run. They want to slip on a little, anyway. And uh, one guy said it would be great if there was a, little dog park <laughs> and a big dog park <laughs> anyway th more shade there, they had a lot of questions about the dog park but that was uh, that's a great thing the dog park um, if I don't know should I go down all of the um, specific issues that RRM well, came I should I should have mentioned this just to keep us on track a little bit I, I was supposed to say this and I didn't they have the slide up here so to your left, Peter, are the five kind of components, <laughs> questions we're supposed to be looking at? Right. That, uh, also, I think it might be helpful um, if you agree with the comments of RRM's findings within the design review, just to say that you agree and if there's any points that you didn't agree with or that you'd like that are different from what RRM gave feedback on to highlight those points that are different from their report. So I, I had, I didn't agree with all of them. <laughs> um, I think in general that the, when they started going into the mixer of detail, the, mi the mixture of materials and colors, I think that's getting too deep into the fashionista world and we should let the architects do their job and, and I would, um, you know, I, I wouldn't press those issues as a, as a commissioner. Um, yeah, the massing, I think that was already addressed. I agree with that, especially on uh, Capitol Avenue. Um, <coughs> and I'll leave it at 
that. You talked about, you touched on all these other things. So in general, I think um, it's a great project. If we can handle the finance thing, then I'm all for it. Good. Courtney? Um, I, would, I agree with the, with the review that RM, RM has presented. I think I would like to see, um, <coughs> in addition, uh, a consideration of a hotel, um, more circulation path for outside use just between shopping centers, adjacent shopping centers, adjacent um, neighborhoods. Um, also, centers, let's see. There's one. I'll have to follow up with the next one when I remember. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I, I do agree with most points that RM brought up. You can always jump back. Thank you. <laughs> Nick? Yeah, I too agree with RRM. I think you guys are spot on on the comments. I sat up here 40 years ago in 1976, five and six and seven when we were approving the mall out there. At that time, Capitola's sole economic driver was the village and a handful of merchants on 41st Avenue. There weren't very many at the time. So we saw it as an economic machine that was just going to allow us to do so many things. We, we developed every park in town. We built the community center, the gym, we bought and restored the wharf, did all kinds of things. And so I think that is the key to approving this thing. It has to be an economic driver like the original one was. And right now I have to share my concerns with Commissioner Wilkes uh, that we have to find some way to incorporate into that design changes or whatever to make that economic machine work for Capitola. And my own personal opinion is probably a reduction of the housing units. I'd love to see a hotel in there because I think that would generate substantial revenue for the community. It would take the pressure off the village site and uh, move, in, move in that direction. I sh just there's three main concerns I, sh I share and that I hear in the community that RL RM RRM touched on, and that's the massing along Capitola Road, that just that long stretch of multi-story <laughs> buildings there that aren't broken up. That's a major concern, I think, in the community that I've heard. Uh, traffic, which would probably be reduced somewhat if the housing number of housing units were reduced. And uh, let me, oh, and the overall height that kind of touches on the massing there. So, you know, I'm sure the EIR is going to address traffic. We had an opportunity to underground the utilities back in 1977 and it failed on a 3-2 vote. I'd like to see an attempt to do that. I'm not sure if that's possible uh, based on the costs. Uh, one concern I have that RRM didn't address is the proximity of the new entrance, the main street to 41st Avenue intersection. And right now, and I was sharing this with staff, I think the intersection at Cap Road and 41st Avenue probably operates at about a level C, and there's nothing, maybe less, okay, there's nothing that backs up from, a, from an adjacent stoplight that jams up into that intersection like it does further down from the freeway to Claire's. So I'm just concerned about the traffic and the proximity, and I'm sure it'll be addressed in an EIR, but, uh, that's, that's a concern I, I would like to see addressed. Uh, and then for staff, I would like to encourage staff to work with the county to take down the barrier at 40th Avenue and open it up. I think that would be just a, a really big uh, traffic bonus to relieve some of the congestion on 41st Avenue and especially when this mall gets finished. Uh, you know, that was put in there at the suggestion of Supervisor Dan Forbes back in the in the 70s when the current mall was developed to protect those six houses there. And I think the time has come when that barrier has to be taken down. So we need to lean on the county the for 2025 uh, completion date is now moved to 2030. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> those are my comments. Did you, did you have one more thing? Or? Okay, oh. well, I 
go ahead. One more thing. I just I have a concern about the sign. <laughs> I just don't I just don't like it at all. I'm sorry. <laughs> the um just having a, a more aesthetic approach to incorporating it with the rest of the capital would be preferable. I, I concur. So I think we're done. I don't have anything to say. No, I, I just, <laughs> actually, I really don't have a lot to say. I, I have a lot of notes. I even put posters because it makes you look like you did your homework, I heard. Yeah. So um, I, I, I really am happy that we have RRM and, and uh, John on board to help. And I hope you guys are working. It sounds like you guys are working good together um, because as I read through their document, it's pretty much uh, spot on to um, you know, my, my perception and my thoughts of what we're gonna end up with. Uh, maybe it's one Kavanaugh, and maybe I'm not really totally understanding. I, I hear a little bit of this pedestrian on 38th Avenue concern, and, and my thought was, uh, one, I, I'm totally out on the whole square concept. Man, that doesn't, uh, the town square doesn't fit, town doesn't fit, the square doesn't fit, and, uh, and I really don't think we need open spaces so much, like, uh, you know, we looked at the Paso Robles and those because I think we'll end up more like Santa Cruz and we don't want to look like Santa Cruz where we have place to sleep during the day and, and uh, you know, go to Starbucks and stuff. So, but I, I really think we do need is more of a uh, opportunity that uh, to maybe close 38th at the tunnel and, uh, and all the way up to town square, whatever you're calling that road now, we'll, we'll think of village road, whatever that's gonna be. Um, and open that up a little bit so it's more bicycle and pedestrian only. And you know, we hear this a lot about our own village down here. Close off the Esplanade, make it only pedestrians. Um, this is a great opportunity to do that. And, and um, I won't get into the architecture. My wife won't even let me pick paint colors from my own garage. So I think there's some really good people that can help you do that. We have some people here that can help you do that. That's out of my league. but. As, as we traveled around, my wife and I, we went to different shopping centers, knowing this was coming up, we kind of looked around, and, and a couple of places that we experienced that we really enjoyed was this restaurant um, area that was open with a, like an open area that had a theme, uh, a water fountain, water park. You've got this concept of boardwalks and uh, the tides and the estuary. Well, make a little water feature that looks like an estuary. Make the boardwalk so they don't go to Target because that's not really a bar boardwalk, but maybe they go out to a pier that goes to the estuary that is surrounded by uh, shops. And one thing about Capitola, I think, I think you're right. Um, I don't know if it was um, Scott or Matt that said it, but um, it's hard to put your finger on exactly what Capitola is. Uh, I, it's kind of, it is kind of eclectic. But one thing I can tell you that it is, it's very uh, much of an outdoor town. Santa Cruz is. Uh, go to go along Pleasure Point. Someone mentioned we don't need any more walking area, but what we do need is gathering areas. Uh, you go to any place that has outdoor seating on a Sunday and you're gonna wait in line. Uh, you, you go along 41st Avenue at the end down there uh, by, um, uh, Portola and 41st and some of the restaurants, you have to wait to eat there. Even in the Esplanade, it's a, it's a very busy area. Let's make uh, this, uh, what do you call it, West Village area? Let's make the West Village area an area that uh, you're gonna go to uh, the theater, but you have an outside seating, restaurant, a whole area that you can hang out together and uh, maybe get out of the weather if you, you need to, but we have pretty, uh, uh, average weather around here that allows us to be outside um, most of the time. So for me, I'd rather, I, would, I don't think we need all those roads crossing through, this, this is just me thinking, but more of an area that allows uh, some thoroughfare. I, I understand having the village road that goes to Claire's from 41st, but maybe the one at 38th ends. And uh, on the public benefit side, and I'm glad someone brought this up, the bicycle, because it's someday, I hope, before uh, I'm gone, we have this rail trail in, and it'd be great if the rail trail came right up 38th Avenue, right into that bicycle pedestrian corridor to go to Starbucks or whatever's gonna be in there. Um, so really, I think that's all I had to say. I think everybody else kind of has, has uh, I have a lot of notes here, but my neighbor commissioner over here to the right of me is gonna keep me on, on track here. You're looking uh, at your notes. Yeah, the <laughs> materials and colors, I, I, I don't have anything to say Arian done a good job there. I think the massing is, was a concern. I don't have a concern about the height as long as you can articulate 
the buildings. Um, I think, you know, I noticed that the, uh, the open area that you do have is in front of Macy's, which on one hand I like it because the sun can get in there and people like the sun. Uh, the downside for me is that's also where the transit area is, and I don't know uh, about having to, how you mix that, but I'll let you guys figure that out. Santana Row, I don't think we need a Santana Row. I really don't. I mean, we, we came, we talk, talked about that for years in Capitola, we're gonna have the Santana Row concept. Restaurants along the street where cars are parking and driving, um, it doesn't appeal to me as much as having that open area that's closed off with a central theme in the waterway in the middle or something like that is more appealing to me. So with that, I'll end my talks and my wife will tell me what I missed later, what she wanted me to say. So <laughs> any other <laughs> comments or questions? No? Um, the next meeting is uh, with the city council. Next Thursday. This following Thursday. So you have, uh, for those of you in the audience, have more time to get your information together and go talk to the city council. And uh, we look forward to uh, working with you folks in the future. So okay. with that, uh, I guess, do we need to do a director's report? Do you have anything? Um, no director's Can report. Can I just, just interrupt the just for a second? Oh, <laughs> yes. I, I wanted to make a point to thank Marlon Geyer for going through all this trouble. And I, I know this is a, <coughs> this is a, a, a difficult process. You've done it before, I'm sure, but um, many times. But I, I want to, I, I just, personally appreciate your going through all this and, and working with us. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, commissioner comments? I will not be at the special meeting later this month. That, uh, um, we canceled that meeting, right? Yes, officially. So you you're not going to miss anything. Oh, you canceled it? Mm -hmm. I didn't cancel it. Somebody did. I, I didn't yeah, we canceled it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll send out an official notice. Okay. 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 All right. Anyway. With that, the meeting's adjourned. Thank you very much. For